Feeling like a feisty woman today, apparently. He is going to regret leaving me. Sorry, Post. Or, er, sorry, wait, sorry, Tate. Thank you, Post. Right. Does that say zero? All right, Screamer Shabalala, leave me alone. I'm working on it. <laughs> Ken, thank you so much for the 26 months. No Hezzy Bunny, thank you for the 28 months. Happy 28 to my Pookie and all my Pookies in the chat. He called you all Pookies. I hope you enjoy that. Yo, it's not your boy. Thank you so much for the prime. Appreciate you. Thank you for supporting the stream. Eric Magstar, thank you for the 25 months and a six-month streak. What's up? How are you guys doing today? I'm excited. You guys miss the, like, the football story videos, the, like, soccer stories we've done? Because we finally have another one of those videos coming out tomorrow. Hi, thank you so much for the six months, dude. I appreciate you. Currently on a three-month streak. You're awesome. Congrats to your silver bacon. Solid five out of ten today. You're making it a seven out of ten, though. Well, crying guts. I'm glad. I'm glad I could help. Freedom! Nizcore, you, you feeling, you feeling free. Brady, thank you for the five months. Zealand is love. Zealand is life. But you did just like, every time a Zealand stream comes on, you just like boot up again. You're like, ah, oh, finally. I'm back. Then you just deanimate. <laughs> you just despawn when the stream ends. Just sitting at your desk like in hibernation. Stream comes on, stream notification. Oh, Zealand. Oh, hey, man. Live, laugh, loans. My favorite, re my favorite religion. Live, laugh, loans. You do a story. What, what should I do a story on? I'm working on a script about... Uh, that with the actual title of the video, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it. I spent the entire morning working on coalescing a script around the research that our boy Yaakov did on something. Asian Cup streams with Macwell, well, dude, it, especially if Vietnam makes a run, I am so there. The Asian Cup is on right now. You guys had no idea that you were clicking on an Asian Cup watch along stream. But that is a sin. That's, that's we're going to play some football manager. I also have I have something that I need you guys to to help me with. Because. So you guys remember Jackmate's tweet, right? Your setup looks good. Thank you. I spent a lot of time on it. Chill. I uh, this is a fan, though. This is the very unprofessional part of it. Uh, but we do have uh, if we, we were clean that we, we have. Hold on. Let me just move the camera. We have like the peepo over here. 
right? We have fan art, which is blinded right now. This is from somebody drew this from our old like football manager save. If you if you remember, it's like um, Xander Hinneman from our save two years ago. Somebody drew his famous goal. I literally have it framed on the shelf. Absolutely. One of the coolest things I've ever been sent. I've got my FIFA card right here. I have 37 pace, which I find incredibly insulting. Um, YouTube plaque, obviously. Stuffed Peepo, necessary. New York City Marathon finishers medal, so that I never have to work out again. I just look at this and feel good about myself. I've ruined it. It won't stay. It won't stay up. Oh, God. There we go. Ow. That's it for now. Ugh. We're working on it. Hey, Norwegian fan, thank you so much, dude. I appreciate the uh, appreciate the 16 months. Brady, thank you for the five months. Nick, thank you so much for the two months. Pineweb, thank you for the six months. I appreciate it. What's the best way to upgrade scouting in a lower league team? <gasps> Do it manually. Do it yourself, dude. You're not going to upgrade your own scouting. You got to learn all the manual scouting trips. Get, get in the player search and go hard, dude. Get in the player search and go hard. That's what you got to do. Good evening, Mr. Head Coach, Manager, General Manager, Director of the Football. Oh, the bloody devil, are we? How we doing well? The old York was bad. Uh, did we really need a new one to be as bad as well? Hey, 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 hey. I like New York, all right? I like living in New York. I'm a Floridian at heart, which is dangerous, right? Born and raised. Florida public schools. It's like the Hunger Games out there. <laughs> But I've lived in New York for darn three years now, three and a half years in the state. Yeah, I am a Florida man. I mean, for those that didn't know, I'm a Florida man. Did me and uh, Michael Penix overlap in high school? I know exactly. I went to high school at the same time Michael Penix did. Yeah, um, he was I was oh, I'm older than Michael Penix, but he went to Tampa Bay Tech, which is like 15 minutes away from where I grew up. So like I I I know where I didn't know him when I was in college, like in high school, but I know where he went to school. Do I have a pet? No, I don't have a pet. My parents have pets, so when we go home, I uh, I do have a stream set up from like Tampa in Florida, and when I'm at that stream set up, we'll have a couple of couple of dogs hanging out with us. Yeah, we'll have a couple of dogs hanging out with us. Zealand, could you speak up? I'm in a construction site. The first time I've ever been told that I don't speak loud enough on stream in my entire life. The only pet I have is pet editors. Yes, that's that's very true. I, I have, We have a large collection of editors. Uh, Reese, Ayal, Adler, uh, Gadget, Tom does some editing now. Cam does the editing on the shorts. They all live in the same basement together. Uh, they share one kitchen, one toilet, which gets a little complicated. Zero showers, uh, no windows. Uh, and they edit uh, Zealand content, and that's what they do. Uh, <laughs> uh, dog, thank you for the seven months, dude. <laughs> there they are. There's Tom. There's Reese. Adler doesn't watch Twitch, so I know he's not here. Do they even eat? Uh, yeah, when they finish a video, they get a snack. You know, that's uh, that's how it works. Uh, oh, Adler, I didn't even know... I didn't even know what your name on Twitch was. I had no idea. I feel like he just heard me through. So Adler lives above me. I feel like he just heard me through the floor and was like, I'm going to get on and troll him. I absolutely heard you through the floor. I knew it. I knew it. Adler heard me through the floor and was like, I'm going to log on on Twitch. Brilliant. Just small biscuits. Oh, that's better than they used to get, right? You know, this editor basement. 
They, they do all the actual work, too. It's crazy. I'm building a tunnel under my New York City office. Can you speak up? By far, funniest thing I've ever seen on Twitter is the guy that spent a week and a half tweeting about how he heard people speaking Yiddish under his floor. And he's like, guys, I don't know. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I am going somewhere with this. And he kept tweeting like, I, I live on the first floor. There's no basement. I might, I don't think I'm going crazy. I hear people speaking Yiddish underneath my apartment. I live on the first floor, no basement. Why do I keep it? Like, somebody is speaking Yiddish. Under my, that was fake. Dang it. Well, I guess it was on the internet. You're on the internet. I don't know. But I saw, I th this was a tweet. Is the live channel caught up? It's missing the stream from yesterday. Other than that, it is. And it also doesn't have the Carl save. That's going to, uh, we're, we're, that the Carl, the save we're doing with, uh, with Carl at Catania, that's going to be like a separate playlist. And that'll be out by the next time Carl's on the stream. But it's not out right now. Thank you, chillin'. Have a good one. That tweet was fake. Dang it. Because if you didn't, if you haven't heard, there was, ba there's basically like a, there was like a synagogue. I don't really know the story. There's a synagogue in New York where like, apparently during COVID, they weren't allowed to go there. So these like, if you don't know, there's a ton of Jewish people in New York city and they just started like at this particular community, which was very like intense form of Judaism. They, they were <laughs> digging tunnels to the synagogue, <laughs> like underneath stuff. Like, to people's houses. So they'd, like, walk into one of their houses, then, like, drop into a tunnel, and then, like, go to the synagogue. So they were, like, tunneling under people. Um, yeah, they were, they, they, there's basically, there was just a ton of, yeah, a ton of Jewish people tunneling around New York City, apparently, trying to get to the synagogue. It's hilarious. Some of the videos are just, it, it's like a tiny hole on the ground, and then, like, ten Orthodox Jewish people pop out. <laughs> And you're like, ah, New York. All right. That's a normal Tuesday. Yep. That's a normal Tuesday. Garth the Grosso, thank you so much for the prime. Wow. Vamos a la playa. I appreciate you supporting the stream. Heflerm, thank you for the 20 months. Dog, thank you so much for the seven. Morindor, thank you for the 31 months. Already since my love of FM uh, started by discovering this stream. Well, thank you for the tier three also. Wow. Gary, oh, Gary gets really fired up for tier threes. Nick, thank you for the two months. Brady, thank you so much for the five months. Thank you guys for supporting the stream. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. I just recorded a Save Your Saves. If you're in the subsection of the Discord, you can be a part of Save Your Saves as well. Ah, it was like a scene from a Mel Brooks movie. Honestly, it looked exactly like it. It looked like something, you know, like a Saturday Night Live sketch or something. Uh, speaking about tunnels, today's sponsor is NordVPN. Dang it. They forgot to pay me today. What a shame. To stabilize buildings? Of course. You can't just go digging tunnels underneath a giant city. You're like, there's a reason that's illegal, right? You're just going to, like, accidentally bring down. They're just going to bring down, like, a giant building. Be like, I, we had no idea. Like, you can't, like, if you're in the middle of nowhere, sure, dig as many tunnels as you want. But, like, if you're, you know, you're in a giant city, you can't just start digging tunnels everywhere. That's a terrible idea. But I need you guys' help. I need you guys' help. That's not very freedom of you. Look, we have we need rules, okay? I don't want to be in a skyscraper like, ah, oh, I really hope somebody didn't dig a tunnel under this. Then we're all doomed. The video of the cops' reaction is hilarious. The cop is everybody in that situation. The cops watching like 15 Orthodox Jewish people pop out of a hole like Pokemon. <laughs> like, what I was just thinking of, it's like a dig dug or something. They're just popping out. And you're like, what the hell's going on, dude? How many people are in this hole? Zealand, when he hears Yiddish under the floorboards midstream. I have some news. <laughs> There's more tunnels. Start speaking Yiddish to trick Adler. Adler, yeah, Adler. Obviously, Adler doesn't live on the first floor. <laughs> He's above me. Be like, yes, they're in the walls. They're tunneling in the walls. Ah! Brooklyn, they give you the five months. What do you call a factory that makes okay products? A satisfactory. All right. 
All right. Okay. I said I needed you guys help with something. Uh, we've been talking to the guy that makes uh, the databases, right? And we put this together. The best all-time 11. We put this together on stream yesterday. You and I, us. We put, we, we put this together on stream yesterday. But there's an issue. What we have decided to do for the, for the, for the video, what we've decided to do for the video is we're going to put them in League 2. We're going to put the world best 11 in League 2. But in order to do that, we need five more players. Because we have a nine-man bench, an 11-man starting lineup, and we need five more players. So the question... Is it... Who are the five other players that are going to make this team? I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. We have the world best 11. We've got the best 11 right here, right? They, we have the be the world best 11 of all time right here. Phil Jones, obviously, but we need four more on top of Phil Jones. Well, three more on top of Phil Jones and Scott McTominay. Um, Neuer, Bobby Moore, Lom, Andrea Pirlo, Iniesta, Cruyff, Ronaldinho, George Best, R9. That is the bench that we have. Uh, but we need, like I said, we need five more guys to round out the bench. So we're going to need some diversity in position. We can't just go with like five forwards chat. We're going to need now. Okay. Striker. I'm okay. Like if we're, if, if we try and break down the secondary bench, I think Fenich Pushkas is incredibly hard to disagree with. I think it's very hard to disagree with Fenich Puskas as the striker in this spot. It's very, very hard. To, like, I know there's a million amazing strikers, but he, he I mean, come on. Like, he scored a billion goals. He was the head of that unbelievable Hungarian team. Even when he was old and washed, he showed up and was tremendous at... Uh, was it Real Madrid? So Fenich Puskas is going to be the third striker on this team. It's going to be quite the challenge for the database creator. Static Velocity, thank you so much for the prime, dude. Thanks for supporting the stream. Random, but I knew Kusius. Do I know Kusius Are his potentials would be much higher? Only 16 playing for Ike. Same club Isaac came from. Simba, I don't. Uh, which means you'd be the first person that told me about him should he become something. So shout out. And Brookler, that you got a B for that one. That was a good one. Okay. Now the center back, we've we've been told a lot that this should be Franco Baresi, right? His first name's Franco. The the Italian who there was some debate about him being in the overall first team, right? So then we have you you've got two of our extra five players. Franco Baresi and Fenich Puskas are, are in. Now we've got Don't worry, Maldini's literally in this starting eleven. So Bigger bench. Yeah, so we've got the starting 11. We've got our nine-man bench that we settled on yesterday. And now we're adding, because you, what? You can register 25 players, right? You can register 25 players for League Two. So we need to have five more players because we have 22 right now with Baresi and Fenich Puskas. So we need, you guys think we need a third goalkeeper or not? Nah, screw it. Do we need a third goalkeeper for the sake of this simulation? Maybe. <laughs> thank you for the five dollar donation sign joe neves he's in the uh wonder kid 11 we did a wonder kid 11 video now we don't need a third goalkeeper all right well then we're just gonna go with um we're just gonna go with three other players then uh three other players so we probably need a fullback uh fullback midfielder and like attacking player probably so like a fullback, midfielder, and attacking player. Probably what we're thinking of. Um, we already have Lom. We already have Lom. Yeah, we need left left back. Sorry, we need specific because Lom is our substitute fullback. So we need a left back who can actually back up that position. Left pack. Specifically a left. Uh, here, here, you know what? 
We're going to the hand that feeds us repeatedly. We are connecting to chat GPT. Hi, soccer legends, best 11. We'll continue this conversation. Best left back ever men's football. Soccer, soccer. Baldini's already in our team. Carlos is already in our team. Beckenbauer is already in our team. Ashley Cole's the next one up. Um, Carlos, again. Uh, Breitner. I actually do not know who that is. He played 1974 World Cup with West Germany. Fair enough. Nielton Santos, who is part of the early Brazil teams. Vicente Lazarzu is a key player for Bayern Munich, the French national team. And Ray Wilson, the left back for England's winning World Cup team in 1966. Kieran Tierney? Hell yeah! Dude, it's, it's Andy Robertson. We all know that. I'm okay with Ashley Cole then. I'm kind of stunned that he's on this, but we need a left back just for the balance of the team because we're building an actual team here. I think Ashley Cole seemed, uh, Ashley Cole was winning the chat, and Ashley Cole also is the first name not already on our team that ChatGPT was thrown out for best left backs of all time. I mean, if you're talking trophies, Marcelo's clear. But I think Ashley Cole's a better defender. I think Ashley Cole's a better defender, right? Or Ashley Cole's a better defender than Marcelo. Marcelo had quality that Ashley Cole didn't have, but it's not like it's not like Ashley Cole didn't have quality. But um I mean okay, the reason Ashley Cole stuns me is it's like there's a difference between being a world-class player and being like, yeah, you're in the 25 best players of all time, right? <laughs> like, obviously, this isn't a ranking of the 25 best players of all time. This is the best 11, you know, this is the best club squad you could possibly build from players all time. And it, it, I do feel like I'm a little surprised, but Ashley Cole is there. All right. How's Danny Alves not in there? Because the dude's in prison. That would be why. Nobody else mentioned him, in case you missed that headline. Hit up. Where's Phil? Dude, Phil Jones is already up here. He's right next to Beckenbauer at center back. Hit up. Now, if we're building a prison FC, dude, he's there. Absolutely best left back in prison right now. Anywhere in the world, no doubt. Now, okay. Now it gets real complex, right? Because left back, we're able to narrow it down. But now we need a midfielder. And we need a forward wing attacking midfield type. Which is going to be the biggest debate. That's going to be the biggest debate. Kafu's already in the team, dude. He's a right back. Uh, oh, Danny Alves can play it both, and we were talking about left backs. I know he played right back, but it's not really important because the dude sucks. Modric? Okay, hear me out. <laughs> Gareth Bale, surely, if we're talking about peak, I mean, if we are literally like, okay, if we are talking about peak ability, Gareth Bale's in the conversation, straight up. Gareth Bale's in the conversation. Gadinsha's really hard, like, Gadinsha's really hard to ignore, though. Because I've watched those highlight packages, right? And I know I'm not a huge, like, judge a guy off a highlight package, but he has the career achievements in his highlight package is nuts. Hello. And yes, is already here. And yes, is already on the bench, the initial bench. Beckham for set pieces, Bastion Schweinstein. See, Schweinsteiger's a great example of one of those players that was pure world class, but I just don't think he's quite into this conversation. You know what I mean? 
Quiggles, thank you so much for the Prime, dude. Thanks for supporting the stream. Tricky, thank you for the Prime. We just spent $10 of Jeff Bezos' money. I appreciate you guys. Uh, Rude, Rude Gillett, no. Michael Bollock? We haven't heard Michael Bollock's name. Gascoigne? I mean, if we're talking at pure peak, I don't, I still, I think Gareth Bale is better than Gascoigne. Like, at pure peak. Tess Stickler, thank you for that nice name. Thank you for Prime. Appreciate you supporting the stream, dude. Are you Sebio? Or Jose Andrade, the Uruguayan from 1924 that we love so much. I don't think Luis I don't think Luis Figo's I, I don't think Luis Figo's on this list. Hell of a player though. I mean he plays he's a, like I think I'd probably the problem is I'd probably go Garincho over Luis Figo, right? We're looking for for me right now in the wing, we're looking for somebody to take Luis Figo's spot. I don't know enough about De Stefano. I don't know. We're kind of are we already have our defenders taken care of, but I don't know enough about De Stefano. Who was that? Bobby Charlton? Well, he was a striker, right? We already have the three best strikers ever, I think. Pelé, R9, and Fenich Puskas. Bobby Charlton's definitely top 10, but like best strikers that have ever lived. He was an attacking midfielder. I thought he was a striker. Jay McGamer, thank you so much for the 11 months, dude. I appreciate you. James Builder. Uncle Big Bear, thank you for the two years. Afro Chuck, thank you for the 33 months. All right, let's rank it out. Let's rank it out. Best wingers in football. Sorry, I got to type in soccer. In soccer, his, in men's soccer history. Messi, Ronaldo, we already have them. Yeah, Garincha. Okay, Chat GPT is with me here. They got gigs at five. Sir Stanley Matthews. Oh God, we haven't. Oh, we, I do already have Cruyff. Okay, thank God. I was like, I, I thought I'd have Cruyff. So then, uh, here's the other thing: best attacking midfielders. Men's soccer history. Maradona, Zinedine Zidane, Michel Platini. I've seen some people throw up Platini. And then there's Alfredo De Stefano. He's a huge old throwback. Okay, so he was 50s and 60s. They've got De Bruyne. Kevin De Bruyne. I think Kevin De Bruyne is in the Schweinsteiger category. He's a hell of a player, but I think he just needs, like, yeah, he needs something just a little more to be in the conversation to be on this list. Because I don't, I don't, I don't hear people talk about. You know, it's almost like the impact that these people have on people that watch them. Like with people that watched Beckenbauer, they were like, he was just. You know, people that watched Abrano, they're like, he's an incredible player, but he doesn't have that emotional impact on people that even somebody like. You, you know. I I've explained this terribly. There's one more level that Kevin DeBrona has to reach in order to be one of the four or five best midfielders ever to play. Gerd Muller was the poacher. He's he's not he's not on that. And Ashley Cole does? No, but DeBrona doesn't play left back. <laughs> and Ashley Cole does? No, but he doesn't play left back. You know, DeBrona doesn't play left back, so. Yet. True. Yet. There's still time. But no, I, I agree with you. That's why I was surprised that Ashley Cole was on the list because I would have put him in that category as guys, you know, just bona fide world-class player, clearly an incredible player, but also apparently the second best left back ever. Uh, I mean, Maldini also played left back, but. Did it do? This is very difficult for me. Mm. 
Dirtle, thank you so much for the tier one. Okay, hear me out. Wing, we go with Garincha. De Stefano. Alfredo De Stefano and uh, and on the wing we go with Garincha. That that this could be our final team right here. Look, I love I look, I would love to sneak Wayne Rooney into this team, but he's not as good as Puskas Pele or R9. He's just not. Like I I will always a truther for Wayne Rooney being one of the all-time best players, but So what uh here, what position did did De Stefano play? Obviously a change forward, thank you. Um The Blonde Arrow is a sick nickname. I'm just looking for them to say, like, his position. Forward attacking midfielder. Yeah, so, I, I mean... He was a bit solid in a 2-3-2-3. Two, three, two, three. Oh, this man's a genius! Oh, oops. <laughs> Kadu, thank you so much for the tier one, dude. I appreciate you. Bro, is this a rerun? No, we needed to add literally five more. Uh, we needed <laughs> we needed to add five more players because we're putting them in League Two, and you need a roster of twenty five. You have a spelling mistake in Zidane as well. It's supposed to say Jean Neves. Ah, right. Want to put another five there, but they can't play there, right? I mean, you have like. Hold on. We're not even on the right screen. We need another midfielder. So I probably can't bring De Stefano. Fernandez puts cost, so I'm going with over Alfredo De Stefano. So we need like an actual midfielder. And we're gonna go with best midfielders of all time. Oh, it's not Pelé, dude. Stop giving me Pelé. They keep going with Xavi at five. Oh. All right, best central midfielders in men's soccer history. There, we make it a little more specific. Yo, they literally just put Xavi ahead of Zinedine Zidane, so that happened. Hey, wait, okay. They have De Stefano. Well, I mean, it's freaking Chat GPT, right? But Alfredo De Stefano is here. I feel like going with Socrates would just be oldism at this point. You know what I mean? Or like you fall in love with players just because they were old. Like a, a player like Fenech Puskas and a player like Pele. 
a player like Bobby Moore, they were just widely regarded. You know, it's not like Socrates wasn't an unbelievable player, but I think there are players that have existed since Socrates that were better based off the amount I've heard about him, you know? <laughs> The last spot. I mean, I thought we were already done with this. When I realized we were going to have to do this again, I had cold sweats all day. The last spot. Pixel Pinnon, thank you for the two years, dude. Burgie, thank you so much for the five months. Poll it. Oh. All right, we're going to do a poll. I would like four options in the poll. In the poll will be Alfredo De Stefano. In the poll will be Paul Skulls. In the poll will be Xavi Hernandez. Okay. You with that so far? Everybody following that? And the last of the poll will be Michelle Platini because he pops up on literally everything. Those are the four. Platini, Skulls, Xavi, De Stefano, one of those guys is making the team. One of those four guys is making it. Xavi's on the list. <laughs> We're going to do a poll. We're going to vote on it. Xavi, Skulls, Platini, De Stefano. Those four guys. You've got the Real Madrid legend, Alfredo De Stefano, right? You have Skulls, who was like Manchester United's top midfielder for like 15 years, right? You've got Xavi, who is integral to probably the best midfield of all time. And you have Michel Platini, who was, you know, France's god tier midfielder of the 80s. Everybody seems to agree was the top 10 midfielder of all time. The poll is incoming. We're not, we are not opening up the can of worms of changing what was decided upon yesterday. We're not even beginning. You were not opening up that can of worms. We have the players that we picked yesterday and those are the players that are in the team. Uh, Joey, thank you for the 13 months.
Hey, what's up, Random? How you doing? How about you? I'm doing well, dude. I appreciate it. I was a stream with Carl. I had a lot of fun. Sorry, we're going to get the we're, we're going to get the pull up real quick. Yes. All right, you guys will have a minute to vote. Does that sound good? Sorry the poll took so long to put together. You'll have a minute to vote. I'm going to add a fifth option. We're adding a fifth option. Because there's five potential options on the poll thing. There's five. So we're going to add it. We're, we're adding a fifth option.
All right. Who is the final midfielder in the all-time best 11? Pulls up. Vote now. Top of the chat. You have one minute to determine who's going to be there in the video. Pulls up. Pulls up. What's up? Pulls up. Vote. Five incredible players. Who's the guy? Who's the guy? You have five incredible players. Who's the guy that makes the team? Everybody vote. This is a democracy. We're setting up a YouTube video here. We want to make sure the simulation is as accurate as possible. Vote for who you think is the right answer. Do not get, you know, dissuaded by percentages. And Xavi's in. That's it. Our 25-player team is done. Modric actually finished second on that. So we got the first team that we decided on yesterday. Lev Yashin, Kafu, Beckenbauer and Maldini, and Roberto Carlos, Lothar Mata, uh, Mateus, <laughs> Zinedine Zidane, Diego Maradona, Messi, Ronaldo, Pelé. The bench is Neuer, Bobby Moore, Philip Lahm, Andrea Pirlo, Iniesta, Cruyff, Dino, George Best, R9, and then the final five are Franco Baresi, Ashley Cole, Xavi, Garincha, and Fenix Puskas. That's it. We were just looking for a midfielder in general. I am aware that De Stefano and Platini, those aren't necessarily central midfielders, right? We're just looking for one more player to put on the team. I understand why Ashley Cole is there, but it's still funny to see him there. Oh, totally agree. It's bizarre seeing him there, but he's there because we needed a left back and he was the next best left back that was there. So now that we have our top 25, who is the greatest omission? In my opinion, it's probably Eusebio. In terms of just all-time great players, that just the way the team breaks down doesn't make it into the team. Um, I mean, look, there's only two goalkeeper spots. Buffon and Casillas are both brilliant. I think Buffon over Casillas probably, but... But I like, I, I, okay, can I be honest with you for a second? I think Thierry Henry is a lot closer to like a Bastion Schweinsteiger than he is to the guys on this list. And that's not a diss. I mean, obviously, Thierry Henry is an all time world class player. I just don't think that he actually, like, I, I, I don't think Thierry Henry had a, I mean, the, dude, the forwards on this list, Eusebio didn't make it. Gerd Muller wasn't even close. The forwards on this list, dude. The forwards in particular on this list. It was like, you're talking about Cruyff is on the bench. Yeah, like, I, mm. I'm just talking about like, we because we had the conversation about Schweinsteiger earlier where we're sitting there, we're like, yeah, he's a bona fide world-class player, great player. For a long time, I just don't think that he is quite in that conversation for all-time best 11. I just don't think. Yeah. Henri would be a winger. I mean, I'm counting that in the forwards, though. You know, the, your wingers are Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, George Best, and Garincha. Where does Thierry Henry get into that? You know what I mean? Where does he get into that? Oh, yes. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hello? Hello? 
Hi, who is this? Oh, it's me, Adams. I'm trying to reach Esteban. Oh, Esteban. Uh, he's not here right now, though. Uh, can I take a message? Oh yeah, I I don't I actually don't know if he owns that anymore. To be entirely honest. Oh, gotcha. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, is there is there any way to change the the phone number? Uh oh. Wow. Okay. That was a fast hang up. Thought we were. I thought we really had something there. Whatever. Dude, she literally, she hung up so fast. Another day of being Esteban. It's hard out here, man. I hadn't gotten a phone call asking if I was Esteban in like two days. My favorite thought on that is that Esteban's sitting somewhere like, man, I just really feel like somebody would want my property and nobody's called. What a shame. Like, you wrote the number down wrong! It's my number! Now I get the calls! A lot of people want your property, Esteban. Wherever you happen to be. I tried to play that one nice, too. Normally I say something sassy, but I was like, oh, I'd just take a message. I'm not Esteban, but, like... I've tried to get them to just transfer me the money for the property. That didn't work, either. Um, well, that would definitely be illegal if it actually <laughs> worked. I thought I was like, dude, I'll just sell the property. I've offered it to them for a million dollars. They text me all the time. They're like, hey, do you want to sell your property? I'm like, I'll give it to you for a million dollars. And they're like, no, I don't respond. Who's Esteban? I don't know. Somewhere on some real estate registry, some dude named Esteban put my phone number down years ago and i have gotten a call or a text at least every other day for the past like two and a half years uh, if you're not caught up with that joke uh asking if esteban would be interested in selling that property i have been at times um i've offered it to them for trident layers i've tried to give it to them for free uh they always ignore me after i say stuff like that uh, I, have, I have no idea I'm considering going to the actual property and just trying to get the deed because I my number is the one that's down on there. I have a lot of fun with it, honestly. Uh, they all text me and I'll tell them to change their job. Depends on what kind of mood I'm in, honestly. Rich, thank you for the 15 months of the Prime, dude. I appreciate you supporting the stream. Boona, thank you for the six months. Roadrunner, thank you for the 25 months. I'm glad you love the content. No baddie. Thank you so much for the 18 months. Uh, thank you guys for the help, by the way. That would have been a nightmare if I had to put that list together myself. So I really, really appreciate you guys uh, helping me put together that the, the 25 players. I'm actually going to send that to... Um, where is... Uh, where did I put that? The documents? Yeah. I'm going to send those five players to the guy that's making the database right now. Dude, TTS absolutely murdered that. Butchered that. It makes you an atheist, was what you were hoping it would say, but then it went you with the atheist. Did you know believing in 12.5% of the Bible makes you an atheist? I'm going to go with a B minus. I think it's a solid dad joke. Real, real solid. All right. We are top of the league, 18 matches left. We're in the middle of a transfer window. We have two offers out for Jorge Murugata and Marcelencio Asajas. We have sales out for Amar or for Roy Korsmith and Prince Dubé and loan offers in for Amari Bell. So we're unloading all the guys that we want to unload except for Kaufman. It's all really quite wonderful. And we've got a match to kick off the day as well, so... 
We're gonna we're gonna hit that hard. We've got Evud Plintich. I've always been a huge Evud Plintich guy. You know me. I'm gonna rebuild our first team here. I'm gonna go with old Nunez, the Nunezer. Lanoons. Uh Joaquin. No, nope, wrong Torres. We just have too many Torreses. Clearly. Kaufman, Cromantown. No. Zouter is the backup goalkeeper, though, because we hate Kortsmith. Ulderikus is the striker because we love him. Uh Ruben Providence. Dude, what I, I forget how huge the bench is in this league. It's insane. We have a 12-man bench. A 12-man bench. Nobody in the world needs a 12-man bench. I'll take it, though. All right, Danel Sanani's there. Ibrahim Imbai is there. We need our other center back, which would be Bjorn Ingles and Brian Leza. <sighs> All right. Oh, there's Joaquin Torres, who's going to be out. We have two Argentine wingers, I just realized. When does Civic leave? Oh, February 1st. Okay. Whole first team's been reconstructed. Our bench hasn't quite been finished, though. Rotundo, La Quincia Zefauque, or Zefauk. Where's Say Wellison? Is he hurt? Yes. So he is at the club. He's just hurt. I'm making sure I hadn't seriously misplaced a player. Hey, dude, I'm crab. I'm just hoping we make the freaking playoffs, dude. Thank you so much for the 29 months. Stealth Ops, thank you for the 20, uh, thank you for the three months. Very sad that Skulls didn't make it, but I'll be okay if you give me 10,000 rupees. Are you, are you, is this a stick up right now? Is this, is this a stick up right now? Ah, yes. My incredible lack of midfielders highlighted again. Thanks to the sales that we've done, we are a little, just a little skinny in the midfield department. So Sibic is going to make the bench. And then Petros Mantelos is there. But our team has been reconstructed after our incredibly long three-week break that uh, we just went on. And it's time. Evud Plintic. Would you like number two? You would, wouldn't you? You sick animal uh we're favorites we should be winning comfortably now put on a real show out there against old eindhoven come on boys hey thanks for the 100 bits thank you for all the content what's the main difference between fullback inverted wingback and wingback says ragenvold uh where they go when you have the ball an inverted wingback is going to become a defensive midfielder or essentially an inverted winger uh, if they're on attack uh, a fullback, if they're on attack, will run up and down the wing and look to get further forward. If they're on defend, they will be an extension of your back line. And a wingback, naturally, is going to be somebody that doesn't just move up the wing. They'll look to pick the ball up and advance it themselves. So the big difference between a fullback and a wingback is they're going to look to attack off the dribble more, and they're going to look to be more aggressive with their crossing as well. So even a wingback on defend, somebody that's going to really try to get some fancy crosses in. Uh, from deeper positions and try and be more of a playmaker. That was a little scary. A fullback can kind of do all of that stuff. You can go to player instructions and add whatever you want onto it, but a fullback in attack is usually somebody that's a good athlete. Maybe they have some crossing, but they don't have the creativity or the dribbling or the touch necessarily to be a threat. And then a fullback on defense, somebody you want to be responsible and anchor that side of the field. They're not going to really influence the offense that much. Robin Wood, thank you for the 44 months, dude. Appreciate you supporting the stream. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. That is a long time, Robin. And Medal, thank you for the seven months. So defensively, wingback is like a wide ball-winning midfielder. No, 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 no. Don't think about him that way. Ball-winning midfielders are different. They're unique in their aggression that they attack with like from their defensive position, a wingback on defend is somebody that's going to look to not get caught too far forward. 
but they will take their chances to cross and advance the ball when they're presented. They're not going to try and force it at all. They're going to wing. I like wingbacks and defend, honestly, especially with guys that aren't great athletes that have like good crossing. That's a terrible call. Boo! Otis, thank you for the prime. Now I know why I lose. Yeah, two wingbacks, you need... Oh, he almost saved that. Two wingbacks, you need to have a very good defensive structure outside of that because that leaves you really exposed. Uh, e exposed. I usually have one fullback that's farther forward and one fullback that plays deeper. On this team, we have a wingback on attack and a fullback on support. It's usually a good rule of thumb, but you can win, obviously, without that. Thank you for the other 100 bits, Ragnvald. Randy, thank you for the 33 months, dude. I appreciate it. And Demon Broa, thank you so much for the prime. Thanks for supporting the stream. What's up with UVA basketball? It's feast or famine. Uh, yeah, we suck on the road. We have the longest home winning streak of any Power 5 team right now. Uh, but we have lost like our last, every true road game this season, we've lost. I don't know what the cause of that is. Probably just a lack of mental toughness, and it's a young team. But UVA will be back. Goal! And so will knock Breda. What the frick is up, dude? It's a gorgeous goal. Uh, Alex Lopez has really been earning his spot on the team. Nunez just got here. Olivier and Cham just continues to be the straw that stirs the drink. And Robert Soldrikas, he knows where his bread is buttered. He gets himself right in front of the goal, taps it in, and it's 1-1. It's a good old knock, Breda. We lost the Badgers? Yeah, the Badgers are good. Absolutely blew us out. Plus, plus, thank you so much for the five months. The time of the month where I get ads and remember to prime. <laughs> oh, sweet memories. Thank you for spending $5 of Jeff Bezos' money to be a part of the Hammers. I, I appreciate it. Happy with how we've dominated possession so far. I don't know where the nerves are coming from. It's 1-1, all to play for him. Patricio Nunez trying to recover from a knock. Garib is away at the Asian Cup, so we are going to be missing Abdulrahman Garib for all of the Asian Cup. But that we just signed Patricio Nunez to be able to like play in that role, so he'll be helpful. Oh, good pass. Good level changer. Patricio, you got to get that off your foot, dude. You got to get... Oh, Aldrikas, great run from Nurio. Unbelievably bad touch from Nurio. Feast and famine. Nice step by Lopez. Not a lot of shots from us. They're really stifling us, like, at the point of attack here. Oh, baby! She's in crackers, Batman! It's Alex Lopez! Holy Toledo! No, it wasn't. That was Jose. Oh, my God, it was Jose Rodriguez. What a shot. Keeper's not even close to that. All the north and south action on this. What a hit, dude. Dude, look at the right. Look at this. Oh. 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 Dude. What a hit by my boy, Jose Rodriguez, that is the business right there. And he gave it to him. He gave it to him unfiltered. Cryogenic wall, thank you so much for the gifted sub, dude. Thank you for the five. Do we have another? Do we have another? We have five gifted subs from Joey. Thanks for making five people's days, giving five people an ad-free experience. You can see this face in HD, which is what you... Always secretly wanted. Oh, dude, I'm going to go with Danelle Sedani. Thank you, Joey, for making five people's days and supporting the stream with kindness like that. Cryogenic Wall, thank you for that as well. Real Caldegum, thank you for the 11 months. <laughs> no, Jeff, I don't want ads. You tell them. Punya, thank you so much for the 10 months. If you got a gifted shub, uh, shub, why am I? Sub. The word is sub. If you got a gifted sub, be sure to say thank you. You don't have ads for a month because of Joey or cryogenic wall. And I saw those hundred bits, Roggenwald said wing back and uh, timber on the same. Gabriel and Saliba center defense. So I just felt my wings were exposed. Your explanation delivered. Time to win the Champions League. 
Yeah, try a fullback on support, dude. It's a little more responsible, but they'll still take the opportunity to go forward. There's nothing wrong with the basic roles. Just because it doesn't look fancy doesn't mean it can't be good. You know what I mean? Hey, Jendi, thank you for the five gifted subs. Did I glitch out? Yes, yes, I did. Ruben Providence. You're coming in for old Patricio Nunez. Nurio's not having a good game, so I'm going to go with old Victor Vernerson. Subs hit. There we go. We have the 2-1 lead, but we certainly haven't played particularly well. We are keeping the ball well, and their only serious chance was a pen, but we have not, like, dominated the match. So who else is hanging out? We've got Pereira we can get for Ibrahim Mbai, who we do like. We're going to turn on some time-wasting to help us tick that clock down. And we also have a fifth sub. I'm going to go ahead and get Robert Soldrikas for La Quincia Zafalk. Please and thank you. Jindy, thank you for making five people's days with the gifted subs. Enjoy your no ads, Chronoloxin, Rosette, Solar, McAllister, and Andrew. Please get this out of here. Get this nonsense out of here, Visa. Thank you. Nels, thank you for the nine months. And Stooney, thank you so much for the seven. We just spent $10 of Jeff Bezos' money. Enjoy no ads. Thank you for supporting the stream. Enjoy the show we're putting on on the pitch today. Huh. and Dom's losing. Yeah, we actually aren't. Oh, my goodness. Not the new guy. Not the new guy. Thank you. That was about to be a just cat a, a catastrophic debut mistake for Evud Plentix. That is so bad. Oh, Bayer did a really good job popping that up in the air and clearing it with his left foot. That took care of all of the danger, but that was problematic for Evud Plentix. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> that was close. Guitar's up 2-0 right now. I, I'll be honest. I They choked at the World Cup. Guitar cho Oh, no way. I mean, I can't blame him for shooting that after the goal he scored. Good win, boys. Good win. That's a very good win. Now we have the huge cup match coming up next, but we've started a return from the break with a win. We're looking cozy top of the league right now. Full and Dom lost. Emin is now the second place team in the league. We're the only, you know, even though we fumbled the bag a little bit in the middle of the season, nobody else seems to be as consistent as us at the top of the league. Nunez just ripped his lower leg open. So now we're out our top two right wings. Abdurrahman Garib. Well, he might be home soon because he just drew Kyrgyzstan with Saudi Arabia to kick off their campaign. So that's hot. But, you know, he had an assist on their on a goal, so he was fine. Jose Rodriguez, nice work, brother. All right, we have three days, and then we have Heronvane, I believe. I've been, I've been educated on how to say this one. Heronvane. Emmanuel Dennis left us after his trial. Yes, yes, he did. He wasn't good enough. That's really unfortunate. Currently managing hit harps in the second division, 2026, but just got a job offer from Valeringa. Mm, do I take the job? Depends. I don't know the answer to this, but how big is the talent gap between your team and Valeringa? Because if you're about to get promoted into the top tier and you already have a team that's projecting to be more talented than them going forward, then that's great. But if there's a huge financial difference, like look at their wage budget, go to the competition team detailed, scroll all the way to the bottom, look at how much they're spending on wages. If it's like three or four times what you're spending on wages, you won't be able to cover that in a year or two. So then just go to Valeringa and spend their money smarter and you'll be better. Yeah, we're killing it though. We're killing it. We're having a really good season. We did a great job overhauling this team. We feel really good about where we're headed. FCV Dender from Belgium. You, uh, If you want this guy, there is a very... Surefire way to get him. You just have to pay the amount of money. Oh, yep, you don't want to pay. Jorge Mudogata, the 29-year-old Peruvian league acquisition. We understand the level of player we need to sign to make a difference for us in the league this year. Adaptability is a bit of concern, but we do have a couple of South Americans on the team already, so I'm hoping that and the Spanish speaking will allow him to adjust more comfortably. But we just sold our holding midfielders for $1.2 million and 900000 And this is why we do our scouting. We knew we could go after Mutagata for, like, absolutely nothing. 
after that. And we knew Mutagata was good enough. So we're just going to have him uh, continue to work his game. So he's going to work as a ball winner, as that's more what his uh, his quality is. Olivier and Chom got a $30,000 bonus for his goal and everything else output, so pretty sick. But we've got one more loan signing out there to try and round out our defensive midfield room. What's the best team in the English 5th Division? <sighs> Notts County, right? They're the team that got punked by Wrexham and like didn't get into the football league because of it right technically Z is a mod I am technically a moderator thank you so much for uh, asking they went up in the playoffs oh didn't they almost get oh didn't they almost uh not get up in the playoffs. So if they got up in the playoffs, then I have no idea who the who the best team in the fifth division is. Just check the table, dude. I have no idea. Chesterfield, probably. I re I I think I remember we were tracking it on stream and it was like Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, it is 2 nothing. Qatar is one of the best teams in Asia. It, they, they just choked in the World Cup. They're the reigning Asian champions. As, my, as little as you may think of Asia, that does include Saudi Arabia, Japan, and South Korea. They won that whole tournament the last time. Like, And Alboaz Ali is a heck of a striker. They just totally choked the World Cup. Who knows? But they're beating Lebanon 2-0 to kick off the Asian Cup. So Qatar looks like they are ready to try and defend their Asian title. Uh, I mean, I, if you look at their results as a national team, what they've achieved, like South Korea hasn't won an Asian Cup since 1960. The Asian Cup is notoriously tricky. It's a lot like AFCON. There's a lot of teams like Iraq that can just pop up and just have a good team that year and be playing for something special. And like, it, it gets complex. It's not a consistent tournament and it's not easy to win. Wrexham's currently third in League Two. Yeah, I think Wrexham's going to get to the championship and stall out. I think they will get to the championship, though. Based off the levels of League Two and League One, they're not far off the National League, especially with the kind of the momentum they have, but the championship's a massive climb. Here, Wade, thank you for the two months, dude. I appreciate you. HMS Boris Johnson, thank you for the tier one. Thanks for being a part of the stream, the, the part of the hammers and supporting the stream and all that. Macwell's called Iraq and Oman dark horses for the Asian Cup. Oh, yeah, he did. Macwell did a whole prediction video for the Asian Cup, didn't he? I would say I agree with Oman, but I don't agree with Iraq this try the, this time around. But Oman had a tremendous World Cup qualifying. I think Oman's definitely a dark horse for like a semifinal run. I don't think they have enough to win the Asian Cup. But Oman did beat Japan in World Cup qualifying, and they, they, they did not miss the Asian playoff by much. They were really co like competent. Really, really together. Good national team, like good federation and everything. They do a good job of organizing. So they, yeah. Oh, I could, I totally agree with him on Oman. They're up right now. Your form has been excellent, Olivier Pinchum. Our big cup match against Hiran Vane. We've already beaten two top flight teams. So this should be uh, easy breezy, lemon squeezy. You know what I'm saying? Robin Jabich trial coming to an end. That's a decent player, but that hatred of big matches is enough for me to say. No! Oh, 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 oh. I don't want you because you're bad. Okay. Glad we could, glad we could get that out there. Our other signing at defensive midfield, Marcelencio Asajas from Suriname. A mild hatred of big matches, but a consistent ball-winning presence who is not rattled particularly easily. Just a, a good defensive midfielder, and we need five of those guys on our team with the way that we play, so here he comes. Marcelin Asajas. Welcome. Fun to have you. Antonio Van Wick, you're on the loan list. Congrats on the move. Amari Bell is going to Athens, Kalakea. He's going to the Greek Super League. Have fun, dude. Hopefully we can turn that into a freaking transfer at the uh, end of the season. 
But Amari Bell's wage is out. Yes! Roy Kortschmidt's gone! Dude, f you, man. You were a pro. <laughs> See you later, Roy. Mr. I'm a backup goalkeeper who's not playing much, but I'm upset because you told me I was going to be a backup, and then I turned into a backup. Get the hell out of here, Roy. You and your contract. Get out of here. Stop hating. No, if there is one Roy Kortsmith hater on the face of the earth still alive, it's me, because I will make sure that I stay alive long enough to hate Roy Kortsmith. I'm so here for Roy Kortsmith hate. That man really got under my skin yesterday because he's a backup goalkeeper who we told was going to be a backup goalkeeper and then complained, violently complained about his playing time regardless. Clearly didn't understand the assignment. Didn't understand what we were saying he's probably going to be doing. Oh, Max Caputo, you look pretty good. Melbourne City turns out a couple of good players, dude. Melbourne City legitimately turns out good players. Respect. Manchester City might break every FFP rule all the time, but they develop players pretty well. <laughs> like the City group does a pretty good job of developing players. So shout out to them. Oh. Ambrosius. Oh, yeah, the other center back we were thinking about. I don't know. We liked Evud Plintich better. Che Nunnally. Dude's just all speed all the time. Could be a very fun pickup to have come off our bench. I don't know what they would be asking for, but he is 27 years old and we could make the move. Doesn't have quite a lot of stamina. Do I have enough wingers? No, no, I, I clearly don't. I'm going to offer him zero. Screw you, dude. He's leaving in six months. Three million dollars. Three million. Th three million dollars. Million with an M. Freaking delusional. Lorenzo Venuti. Oh, he's free at the end of his contract. A couple of people like him. He's getting contract offers from Benevento and Osijek. We're already not going to get him, so I'm just going to sidestep that. Henry Vaca. Oh, yeah, you're still hanging out, aren't you? Still don't like you. Still still getting weird vibes from this Henry Vaca. Oh, wow. First time I'm looking at like a Brazilian uh, wonder kid type. He uses both feet super well, and he's, he's young. And we're just going to keep an eye on that kid. Good scouting report, though. Good scouting center debrief. Delgado incoming? Oh, I freaking wish. Am I in Holland? Yeah, I am. I only have 10 wingers. I all, Look, you can never have too many wingers. They get in bad form often. You have to do so many different tactical things with wingers cutting in. Are they an inside forward? You know, you've got your Rom Deuter, Trequartista type wingers. You can never have too many wingers. They get, the more wingers you have, the more tactical options that you have. I love wingers. Oh, well, they've offered Nunnally a contract. So Nunnally's getting into contract moves. Andre Alcinati's going to get picked up. Javier Bellman's getting a move from Burton Albion. Okay. Henrik Hegheim has agreed a transfer that will go through on July 21st. Okay. Hey, Saudi Arabia beat Iraq. So I guess he's not coming home early. An important win that Abdul Rahman Garib did not play a particularly big part in. Bruno Martins Indy. So stupidly slow, it's unbelievable. Olszewski Snow, Jean-Louis Diouf. That's a pretty decent player still playing in Africa. Except Masimbe in uh, DR Congo. Duly noted. Filed away for later. Bowen, thank you for the prime, dude. Thanks for supporting the stream. Calderino, thank you for the prime. Thanks for supporting the stream. And thanks for spending five more dollars of Jeff Bezos' money. Because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. All right. <sighs> Big match here. This is the round of 16 of the Dutch Cup. We have played our way into it by beating two Eredivisie teams. We now play a third Eredivisie team. Vernersen and Ruben Providence are going to get the start today. Rest of the team is ready to go and mostly match sharp. So 
That's cool. We do need a different left back, which would be Monday Akile. And we do need a different right wing option, which would be Uriel Selly. Because we have plenty of options and we are able to feel that out. Muduaga, uh, yeah, we need both of these guys. Literally both of them. <laughs> Is DeWolf learning defensive midfield at all? A little bit. He's trying. So we'll actually have him uh, go in for Saha. So Mudugata and DeWolf are substitute guys in that position. Actually, a Sahas. Mudugata has no match sharpness. It'd be a nightmare to try and throw him in. A Sahas at least has some match sharpness. Mudugata also just got here. Asahas has been playing in this part of the world before in, in a cup match like this where it's one off and we're not building towards something. I'm not liking that. 4 2 3 1. They do have an aggressive fullback. I want to make sure that we keep track of. But we're playing the, you know, basically the same formation going against each other here. Vinci, thank you for the five months. Appreciate you supporting the stream, dude. Martin's Indy's still playing. Not well, dude. No, well, Bezos told me you have to buy Peruvian kids. I mean, that's what we've done uh, so far. Levu, thank you so much for continuing your gifted sub. Ukes, thank you for the 13 months. I got to stand up. I got to stand up. <laughs> A minus, dude. That was good. Yukes, that was real good. Thank you for the 13 months. Prince, yeah, Prince Dubé, I, I did him wrong. Uh, we signed him. We thought he was going to be a part of the team. Then he just wasn't. We found better strikers. We changed the way we played. He didn't really fit into it. But in fairness, next transfer window, we are looking to move him on, you know? We are looking to move him on. Cup, round of 16. Our team is set. We're ready for the big time. We're ready for the show. Can we beat a third consecutive top flight team in the Dutch Cup and continue what is a magical run for this beautiful Nach Breda club that was coming out of financial ruin when we took over? We're about to find out, aren't we, chat? Wanted painted neck. I want them to turn neck. It's time. Just blasting outside the stadium. My heart is knack. Let's go win this round of 16. It's Knack Breda, the leaders of the second division against here in vain of the Eredivisie. Let's go boys. Marvin, thank you so much for the prime, brother. Oh, I like the idea. I like the idea. Get back. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. 
Long game. Bring me the tablet. Wow, that was really fluid. There you go. Come on. Playing our way back into this game. Not getting boat raced. We're getting our possession back. We're playing our way back into this game. We're not getting boat raced at all. We're fine. Not a bit of a breakdown. Their, their, their goal, yeah, we were jamming out there, but their goal was Bayer's step too far forward. They have a very compact kind of fluid tactic. Very intense overlap happened. Nice save by Bezo. Where Hall got basically in front of their striker, their right wing back. So their lines are pretty close together. They've got a striker that's a poacher that dropped way off, and Bayer followed him all the way there. So we just need to prevent that from happening again. Nice block. We're playing hard. Certainly have the right mentality today. We're getting in front of shots, throwing the bodies around, playing with the right energy. Just need to put things together going forward now. Olivier, nice. Oldrikas. I don't like him turning up. Why is he turning up? He's not somebody I want trying to carry the ball there. Oh, Evud's going to psych himself out here. That's fine. The two defensive midfielders we can use here that are all better with the ball than you guys are. But Vernerson is hanging out. You see, that's just not our game, though. We know that's not our game. We're self-aware. Leave him. I don't know how, but they've turned a poacher into an absolutely lethal deep-lying forward. Good defense from Plintich. NNS, thank you for the five months, dude. I appreciate it. Oh, Bezo had that, dude. Bezo freaking had that. No, it's not two legs. This is the whole shebang right here. We can come back, but we we're gonna need some luck now. We've gotten the Opposite of luck so far. Nice pass by Alex Lopez. This isn't the fullback. We can catch up, though. Come on, Oldrikas. I need Roberts to be Roberts. Okay. Try and give them relaxation. Like, hey, you've been unlucky so far. It's fine. Uh, we, you know, the, the struggles at left wing back from Vernerson have not been welcome. We'll see if Monday Akile is about to play the game of his life. 
Uh, both of our defensive midfielders being anxious, us having mentality issues there is not great. Danel Sinani is somebody that can score goals, so we're going to get him there. Um, we're going to get Alex Lopez. We're not getting beaten in the midfield. We're going to get Alex Lopez as a um, as a playmaker on this side. Danel Sinani is going to go crazy like that. I'm going to put him on support so he's a little more responsible. Well, Augustine Pereira has to come off. So we're going to have one more sub available after halftime. We're going to hang on to that, but the Wolf is good enough to do this. Okay. Going to drop our team because we press too much out of the formation that we're in. We're going to get flambéed. All right. Let's see how the first 15 minutes go out of the half. We just made four changes to the team. Let's see how the first 15 minutes go out of the half. Whew. Left wing still in attack. Yeah, I, I switched it back real quick. Sanani's a goal scorer. We want him to be able to we want him to be able to threaten the goal. Yeah, I think the main reason we weren't turning it over in silly areas and our buildup wasn't great is we just both both of our holding midfielders didn't have the right mentality today. So I brought in the best passing midfielder we had on the bench, Matias DeWolf, to try and give us an outlet, right? And Jose Rodriguez had a better match rating even though he was feeling anxious, so he's, that's the reason I left him out there. Uh, Jose's just older and wiser than Lopez, too. There we go. Okay. Come on. I want to see a highlight where we start with the ball and end with the ball. We have certainly not done a good job. There we go. Turning the momentum graph around. Uh, a little bit. We tried. Now it's not going. Okay. No, it's a long time coming around. All right, we need two goals. So we're going to have to swing for this pretty quick. Uh, I've got my move. It's Rodriguez out for Laquincio Zafalque or Zafalque. My boy LaQuincio can absolutely make stuff happen. Um, eh. All right, Aquila is going to fly forward. Levier and Chom's going to be there. You are going to be just. You're just going to be existing, my dude. That's how we want that. Uh, okay, attack. Uh, raise the tempo. Raise the directness. Passing into space is now in play. And we are now going to attempt to apply all of the pressure. No, not yet. It's only 60th minute. All right, LaQuincio Zafalk is coming in. We're making our adjustments. We feel good. That we should at least be able to create something out of this. Oldrikas is up there to knock the ball down. Um, issues and Choms get... Oh, just send him off, dude! He's on a yellow and he just went for that challenge. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We can get a goal on this highlight right here. We're in the right spot. We got Incham on the move trying to make a play. Danel Sinani, just terrible. Just so, so terrible from Danel here. He's left-footed, dude. Just take this touch and go straight this way in which three on two. And he brings it to his right foot and starts a traffic jam. There's nothing about what we're telling him to do that says do that. Right? Like, dude, seriously. What are you doing there? What are you doing? Sanani, it was there. And Chom set him up so well. Bring it back. Oh, it's a good ball in from Chom, but of course, Danel Sinani hadn't gotten back yet. Come on, boys. We got to make it happen, and we got to make it happen now. It could be some magic, but it has to happen now. Oh, good pocket. They're giving him some space. I hate that shot. Come on, DeWolf. Play a ball. We've grabbed hold of this game. I'm going to go very attacking. We got to go for it now. Because we like we we have hold of this game with both hands right now. 
The momentum graph, we just jumped all over it, but he's on. Oh, that's ours. Oh, great pass by him by. Yes, yes. Go, Donnell. Go, Donnell. Go, Donnell. Knock it down. No. Mixed crosses because we're going to have such an advantage in the box that a low whipped one isn't necessarily bad. We got to score now, dude. They rushed that cross. Sonani just hasn't been great today. Could have dribbled that in a little bit more. No, thank you, Incham. Incham and the Wolf have been fine, particularly Incham. Oh, good look. Oh, yes. Uldrikas, all of a sudden we're swaggering. Incham. God, the cutting edge of a butter knife today. Like all his, oh, DeWolf, great play. Incham, he's shooting. Now shoot it! He took that one extra touch and set up a pretty good looking chance. Ben, thank you for the 36 months, dude. That is, uh, three years is insane. Thank you so much for uh, supporting the stream. This is the last of it. This is basically everything we can throw on it now. Well, we got a highlight immediately, but it doesn't look like ours. Dude, we just own the match for 20 minutes. That's so annoying. This is a very un this is an unfair scoreline for how well we played in this game. That's a good way to cap that off. God, Macwell was streaming? Dude, was he, were you doing an Asian Cup watch along? Were you doing an Asian Cup watch along? Thank you for raiding over, dude. Oh, we just lost to the Dutch Cup. Damn it. Oh. No, Lebanon, Lebanon, I don't know what happened. But in World Cup qualifying last time, too, Lebanon... It was trash, like an absolute dumpster fire. They're, um, they were not good. Welcome to Macwell's Raiders. I hope you had a good stream doing all that. Oh, uh, I managed Taunton. Have any tips? Sign free players, get a senior affiliate, get some loans, and build yourself a team. Building up from the sixth division of England is all about talent identification. Find the talent, bring the talent in. That's, uh, Come on, Buccaneers! Oh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a madman on stream on Monday for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think the Bucs are the more I think about it, the more I think the Bucs have a chance to win that game, and I am so excited. Oh, but Mackwell, thank you so much for raiding, dude. Uh I hope I guess you were doing a watch along. Qatar with the 3-0 win. Um What? Who? Who did uh, Almaz Ali get a second, or who? Who was doing the scoring? Oh, is Akram a thief? How is it? How have none of these dudes retired? He's got to be. Oh, a thief's not the guy I'm thinking of. Their captain, I think, is the guy that like retired. He should have retired if he hasn't. 
And then Ivory Coast and Guinea-Bissau tomorrow. We've got Australia, India, China, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Syria. I love the Asian Cup. I love it. I love it. Rabelar, thank you for the 95 bits. I recently bought FM24 because of you. Next season, you'll win the cup. I freaking hope so. That carry is for you, Dorsey. Thank you for the six months. Enjoy your silver bacon. Congratulations on getting a job with an MLS Youth Academy. You're living the dream, dude. Congrats. I'm the orange cat of FM streamers. I I don't know what that means, but I do know that uh, uh, <laughs> Abdurrahman Garib is still not here. I thought he'd played another match, but he hadn't. Uh, all right, we're out of the Dutch Cup. Round of 16. We made it to the third round of the Dutch Cup, and we were eliminated. Brutal draw, dude. We already had to beat two freaking teams from the Eredivisie just to get to that round. And we couldn't pull it off a third time, and now all of a sudden we're the losers. I'm going to be I'm going to do something that's going to make me really mad. I'm going to look at the Dutch Cup matches and They're in the they're in Eredivisie. I did not know. Oh, they're they're the team for the third division. They got smacked by AZ. And then there's uh Eindhoven who's in our league. There's um FC Eindhoven, not PSV. NEC is in our league. I don't think Excelsior is. The rest are Arab Z teams. Yeah. But there are a couple of other teams that are they had much easier draws than we did up to this point. And now they're just waltzing through. Ollie, thank you for the 39 months, though. I I that was quite something. Uh. Hello, Z. A man walks into a fishmonger's uh, with a salmon under his arm. He asks the person behind the counter, do you make fish cakes? Of course, replies the fishmonger. Oh, fantastic, says the man. It's his birthday. After his trip to the fishmonger's, the man entered the pet shop next door. He found an assistant and asked, do you have any bird seed? And the assistant said, yes, sir. What kind of bird do you have? And this man replied, oh, no, I don't have a bird. I'm looking to grow one. You get both, Ollie. Corrupt, thank you for the three months. Thank you for being a great mod, Ollie. That was, uh... I'll let chat take care of that one. I'll let chat take care of that one. I'm K, thank you for the 32 months. I appreciate you being a part of the Hammers. Thank you for supporting the stream, brother. Smooth. He's meant to be there to develop. Well, then he should be a better player, Jesper Sorensen. Okay, he's decided to keep him here, but apparently Rotundo's not happy with the amount of playing time that he's getting. Well, he's been outdone by Olivier and Chum, so... Lucas Rodriguez, thank you so much for the prime. I appreciate you supporting the stream with that. $5 of Jeff Bezos money, dude. Okay, that was a good one, dude. That's a C. And for a, you know, for a pickup line, that's pretty solid. What was uh, the Aturbe news? His request to be removed from the transfer list. Oh, that's that like backup goalkeeper we were looking at. Oh, this guy is a Segundo Falante. Oh, I actually, I really like this guy. Ali Al-Azmari. He's got some passing. He's a little stupid, though. It's hard to be a midfielder and be stupid. You have to really overcome that. Really have to work to overcome that. Hmm, this guy's wage demand is low, but his asking price is high. Perhaps a loan? No. Damn. Where is Carl? Carl's going to be back on whenever he's got time. We're going to keep playing the uh, Catania save. 
Al Sadati's getting a million offers. So we're just gonna we're gonna leave him to that, as it were. Drumbayev signed a deal. Uh Salilo Razebocha. Me and my South African knowledge. No, but Carl will be back on when, when he's got time. We were going to keep playing the Catania save and continue. Is there a chance Carl is going to submit an SYS in about three months? I hope not. Because I'm the one helping him play, like helping him learn football manager. So if he has to submit an SYS, then I think I've failed at my job. Came for the Macwell raid and also saw your YouTube video about the philosophy and how to be an FM god on my way home from uni. Also saw your Reddit video about the forbidden front three of Kvarch, Kelly, and Katie Kulazewski. Yes, just don't abbreviate it and you're fine. It's a very good front three as long as you don't abbreviate it. Kvarj, Skellia, Kane, Kulazewski. Very talented front three, just don't abbreviate it. Doesn't need to be abbreviated, uh, really. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a Monka W. It is, it is a significant Monka W. Oh, I thought he had 16 passing, but he has 16 penalty taking. Oh, what a, what a disappointment. Oh, you could have been something. So when's the deal go through? Should go through, oh, they said 17th, all right. On the 17th, Prince Dubé will be moving on. Wow, did everybody at the top of the table lose? Chad, I think we might be off to a nice, comfortable season here in the second division of, uh, of the Netherlands with a team that was not projected to get promoted this year. We're flying. Muragata, Mantelos, Davy Bregu, Zouter, Sibic, De Wolf, Vernerson, Rotundo, Monday Aquile, Kaufman. Yeah, all those guys. Get the get those guys on the field. Let them play in the uh, reserve match this weekend. We got go ahead Eagles away. Man, we turned this team into some ballers. That's what I'm talking about. Arn Furious, thank you for the 35 months, brother. Uh, that is a long time. <laughs> Thank you for supporting the stream and enjoy your bacon. Enjoy your ad free experience that you've enjoyed for Neron three years. I hate irrelevant green attributes on players. Yeah. Honestly, penalty, penalty taking is like my least favorite attribute to be in green because it's right next to passing. And I'm like, oh, we could. Nope. <laughs> Dang it. Ah, oh, they're afraid to go ahead, Eagles. Well, I'm not afraid to go ahead, Eagles. I think we are going to go ahead of them. Taikitsi, thank you for the 27 months. Yeah, that was the worst joke you're going to hear today. And I stand by it. I stand by it. Worst joke you're going to hear today by a mile. It's not even close. Why? Because. Huge, thank you for the 40 months. I appreciate you. Thank you for supporting the stream for a long time, huge. I'm a go-ahead Eagles fan? Oh, dang, sorry. Ruben Providence is a little uh, a little tired. So we're going to try uh, Uriel Celli. And he's going to be an inverted winger on that right side because we're out of right-footed wingers. That happens to me all the time. I sign too many left-footed wingers. Actually, just going to go with uh, Danel Sinani. He's just going to go after the goal. Uh, Anybody else, like, too tired to play today? How's Zay Wellison? Is he back yet? Nope. Not even close, dude. We are going to hit some offers out, though, while I'm hanging out here and thinking about who we might want to move. Oh, yes. Benjamin Jimenez. Try and find a loan move for Benjamin Jimenez. Guy that was signed before we got here and just happened to join in January, even though that contract had already been figured out. Poor Davey Bregu, man. Dude had a really hot start to the year, and then I just benched him and never played him again. It's tough out there. We have a good fit team. Good fit team that's ready to play. We should go with Brian Laser though. Evud Plentix looks a little tired, and we do have three center backs that we love, so I love them all. 
They're like my own children, except one's been loaned in. Actually, that is like my own children. We loaned one in. Flow Feast, thank you for continuing or converting to a tier one, dude. What's a good squad size? 30. 30 is a good squad size. I usually work with somewhere between 28 and like 33 guys, like in a Premier League team. And the way you achieve that, obviously, you can register 25, but you got to have a couple of guys that are young enough to get underneath the, the requirement, you know? I mean, I like, you know, the rotation, the depth. It's important. You don't want one injury to be able to derail your entire season. But the smaller your club is, the smaller your squad should be. The more financial trouble that you're in, Right? Uh, like, if you're in the sixth division, depth is actually very important in England. You need two first 11s because you play so many matches that being fit is just going to, like, having 11 fit, energetic players is just going to give you a huge advantage over most teams that don't have that. But if you're in a lower league that isn't like England, where you play 87 matches every year, then you're going to want a smaller squad so you can concentrate the money in a few superstars. Oof. That's what you're going to want. So, like, the situation's always different. But if I have a lot of money and a lot of matches, I'm working with anywhere from 28 to 33 guys. I think over that, you're going to really struggle to get guys the playing time you want. And it's all about being comfortable with managing the playing time expectations of players, too. Like, if you're in the Premier League and you're in the Champions League and, you know, you're playing 60 matches a season, you know that you can have, like, 20 regular starters and they're not going to get mad. Right? Like you can play them in enough matches that they won't get upset. Like, regular starter and above. And making sure that you go through the course of the season and his preferences change. Like, for me, Alex Lopez becomes a starter. It's like, okay, I go to say Wellison and I'm like, well... We might need to lower his playing time a little bit. And as, you're, if you're, as long as your team's doing well, they're usually okay with that if you say, I want to lower, lower a bit of playing time. That's to avoid the angry fringe players you're talking about. All right, Evan Rotundo. Nice ball back to Jose. He is so having that. Hip, hip, Jose! Augustine Pereira. Oh, whoa, 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 Oh, no. Jens Jacobs is here. But that's my ball. Thank you. Alex Lopez, great work there. If a player starts every other game, that not be enough for them to not get... Yeah, that's enough. Like, for example, Ernesto Andreu in the Taunton save. Or in a save like this, like Danel Sinani. Like, Danel Sinani could be a regular starter, and it wouldn't matter. Ooh! Thirty player squad psychopath behavior. If I'm at a big club, like a giant, you know, if I've built a club up, that's what I have. We'll carry thirty guys into a season. And they'll all be able to get playing time. You know, you rotate through, no injuries really are able to just, like, especially in leagues that are as competitive as the top couple leagues. One injury could make a big change to your quality. That was beautiful. That was gorgeous, Alex Lopez. Take a bow. Yo. Great pressure from the boys there. Great well won by Rotundo. Uldrikas with the holdup. Torres with the slip. Lopez with a good touch to set himself up. Goalkeeper didn't do particularly well, but that's a nice finish. And knock Breda's in the lead against Go Ahead Eagles. Like, there's a lot of ways, you know, football managers the same as soccer football in real life. There's a ton of ways to be successful in different tactics and different squad building philosophies all i can tell you is how i do it right and we win a lot <laughs> <laughs> let's go baby robert soldrikas and it's 2-0 the jump man 
The jump man jumping again. Mr. 20 jumping reach off the press. Another interception from Evan Rotundo, and he delivers a dime to Uldrikas. No chance for the goalkeeper. He is too good. He contributes so many goals a season just by being tall, but this is a lot of Evan Rotundo. Full credit to Rotundo. He's impressing the heck out of me today. His energy in that pass was really good. That pass was really good. Like how we've dominated possession. We're going to emphasize possession going into the second half. Latvia's Vincent Abubakar. I love Vincent Abubakar. What a, he just added for the memes. Got sent off in the World Cup for taking off his shirt. Yeah, Jumpman picked up a knock. We'll get him out at 60. Like a little bruised leg or something. His fitness is down, but he's still Jumpman. We left him out there so he could do something like he just did. Wow, I, they've come out of the half with a fire. Danel Sinani, not really doing anything, are you? Let's check this highlight. Oh, Bayer, you panicked. Got bailed out there. Good play by Augustine Pereira. Well, Danelle, you were already getting subbed out. Now you're definitely getting subbed out. I'm revoking your bus ticket. You can walk. It's the Netherlands. It's not that far. Oh, goodness. Don't call that. Are you kidding me? What in heaven's name is going on out here? LaQuincio Zifalk, you're in. Danel Sinani, you're off for all Ruben Providence. He's just outplayed Danel Sinani in his time on the field. Who got called for this? Whose foul was that? That was Augustine. This is some ball hockey, brother. That crazy deflection. He hit the ball first also. We got to that ball first. Oh, let's go. Big hands now. God, Bezo, you always go the right way and never get it. Did I take in Zifalk just for the name? Uh, LaQuincio Zifalk is an incredible name. But no, he actually fits our... Dude, I subbed in Ruben Providence two minutes ago. He's hurt. All right, Augustine. Providence is back on the field. Oh, good ball. Terrible header. What a ball by... Aug Augustine Pereira's got like 14 crossing. That guy can drop it in the top of a hat. Terrible second half. Really bad second half from the boys. Very, very bad. Um, all right, I got options here. I'm going to go with Matias DeWolf on the left. I'm going to get Ruben Providence out for Uriel Celli. That's four subs, so next sub's the last one, and we're going to go Vernerson for Nurio because he's not playing well. All right, Nurio's been out of form recently. Probably need to start Vernerson for a game or two. Let's cut this one out and get it to the next one. Play hard. It's in this game well. Go to balance. Add some time wasting so we can start to bleed that clock a little bit. Employ a few of the dark arts. Legs are getting heavy as well. Turn that all the way up. Regroup. Slow the pace down. Don't counter when we win the ball. Classic waste some time moves. I hate that from Laza. No idea why we're doing that. Atrocious. Dad bod, thank you for the three months, dude. I appreciate the prime. Nice step by Vernerson. That's why we make the sub. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. You know, the tempo's as low as possible. Let's let's be low tempo. They're going to press high. We're going to keep our number. We should get a goal here at the end. They're really high up. Pereira. Dude, such a bad pass. 
Oh, that's perfectly fine. Terrible pass, so. Augustine, man, you're trying to give him something. That a boy, Laza. Oh, he's running it down, too. No, he's too slow, but good effort. Good effort. Do, 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 do. Abubakar didn't play claim. Wait, hold on. Is this serious? Abubakar didn't play claiming he was injured for four weeks. Dude, there's no way this is true. So you're telling me Vincent Abubakar didn't play for four weeks claiming he was injured. Turns out he had a hair transplant and was advised not to play football for a month. It was a huge controversy. He got dismissed from the Besiktas squad after. He's a meme, dude. He's an actual meme. Complete meme. That's insane. Dude, I've got... I've, I, I've got a... Vincent Abubakar hair transplant didn't play. That's insane. Dude, get a hair transplant. And he was like, oh, I'm hurt. I can't play for a month because he was invited. He, he looks good with the shaved head. What is a like Abubakar didn't need a hair transplant. It's not like he was one of those guys. Like he just got a hair transplant because he wanted a hair transplant, right? And he <laughs> misses a month and just tells him he's hurt. That's so crazy. He's not technically wrong. He was under doctor's orders, but it was cosmetic. It's like getting. It's like getting a Brazilian butt lift in the middle of the season and then just being like, sorry, can't play right now. We got the three points, even though we weren't at our best. We didn't dominate the whole game, but we did get the three points. That's what matters. And we're looking, we're looking good. Providence and Eldrikas both hurt. Looks like Eldrikas might miss out on the next match, but it is the worst team in the league at home, so... Hopefully we can make that easy for ourselves. So we've got one or two guys that we want to move. Transfer windows still on. We do have financial firepower if we wanted to use it. But I don't really feel the need to use it. Because I don't think there's guys out there that we can really improve our team with that actually want to play for us at this point. Like, I feel like we've hit that natural ceiling, you know? We can look at it, uh, guys that are around that maybe we could go after, like Benny Benny Traore. Be available for sixty thousand dollars. We'll scout Benny Traore. Um, Samuel. These are guys that are. Oh no, these are not guys that are interested in us. We'll get it on to doubtful. Benny Traore is still there though. Max Caputo is still there. The Aussie. Maybe we splash some money to get like a real star into the team. And then there is Sam Dahl, who's Swedish international, that is actually interested in playing for us, which is wild. Um, this guy's available, 120000 Leonardo Benetti. Benedetti. 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 Georgi Tunjov. Estonian absolute, j just large man. We usually are fans of that. Linkovic. Well, maybe we should link up. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying, dude? You know, we should totally, like, link up. All right, we're going to throw them in the priority queue. Maybe we make a move for them on deadline day. Prince Dubé's headed to HJK today. Absolute failed signing. My worst position right now. Probably still defensive midfielder, but we just haven't been able to identify somebody that can take that spot. Uh, not sure why a squad player was sold instead of being used more often. Well, we just had other strikers that we liked more. We signed Prince Dubé at the beginning of the window, and yeah, then it just wasn't the wasn't the sitch. So goodbye to Prince Dubé. Thank you for your one appearance. It's the best outcome for everybody. Um, 
He didn't. He, we didn't have the playing time to give him after the other moves we'd made. So next transfer window, we we moved him to a team in the top flight of Finland, and hopefully he can have a good career. We already brought him to Europe from Africa, exposed him to the European scouts. So some would say we've we've given him a great uh, great opportunity to advance his career. You know, bunch of minor injuries going around right now. I really want to loan that guy. I certainly can't afford him. But worst spot in the team is we don't really have a playmaker outside of Alex Lopez, and Alex Lopez isn't like a great playmaker. We need a we need a different playmaker, basically. Oh, dude, no, Saudi Arabia. What? They lost to Lebanon and finished third in their group. Lebanon's Garbaggio. What are you doing? It's getting crazy in the Asian Cup, dude. It's getting nuts in the Asian Cup. Japan and Syria are through. Jordan maybe has a shot. Saudi Arabia should get to the knockouts on goal difference, but like. Whoa, Palestine pop off. They won against China and drew India and have four points in their top of their group. Hold the horse. Tajikistan also has a win. They beat Oman, which is wild. It's behind my head right here. Tajikistan has a win over Oman. Iran won both their matches. But right now, Tajikistan's looking like they've got a shot at the knockouts. India has a shot at the knockouts. The problem is they lost to North Korea, so they have to beat China in their final match. If they beat China, they're probably in the knockouts. So they're still alive. The Uzbekistan horribly disappointing uh, loss to Bahrain, but they did draw with South Korea. So was, that's a tough group, man. Losing to Bahrain, though, puts them in tough. Because they're going to have to beat Australia in order to pull themselves out. Asian Cup in the game. Asian Cup's on in real life. This is what I live for, dude. I think Palestine's in the uh, real Asian Cup too, aren't they? I think they are. Was that or were they just in the game? No, they didn't make it. Okay. Yeah, they did. They did. They're in Group C with UAE, Iran, and Hong Kong. Hong Kong making it's absolutely insane. Hong Kong is so bad. Like, at least in football manager and in terms of, like, who the heck is on that team, right? But they are, uh, they're slaying Samuel Dahl, Torben Hein. All right, Benjamin Jimenez. Oh, we got an offer from Lommel in Sweden. Belgium, like I said, Belgium. Definitely Belgium. I said the word Belgium out loud. You heard me. So that actually frees us of the, that actually frees us of the wage demand. Which is nice. All right. Don't like this guy. Benny Traore. Thank you. I've already got my boys scouting him. Good recommendation. I appreciate that from the uh, the agent. Oh, no. He's got an offer from Viking. All right. So I, I think this guy might be a real star for us, Benny Traore. So I'm going to negotiate the offer now. We have 58000 to spare to try and get Benny Traore. I'm going to negotiate the offer right now and see if we can't, we can't, we can't come to a deal. You know what I'm saying? Just, just come to a deal. Gustavo Valacia. Try not to deal with idiots on my defense, but I respect you as a person. You are a human being. But you are also an idiot. Important that we don't forget that. <laughs> Makias will be available for 1.5. Oh, you know, maybe this is the guy. Maybe Makias is the guy that we end up splurging our money on, but we are going to be open to multiple possibilities. Tin uh, De Boginda, definitely a guy that could be a really fun loan. Oh, he's got some size too. Terrible consistency. What would they want on the loan? 80% salary contribution, an important player, and play him as poacher. Yeah, I don't want to do that. But, you know, I respect your thought process for sure. Ernest Mucci. Oh, they, dude, all this, the agents are coming through. It's not my scouts. It's the agents that are showing out like, hey, you want this guy? He's pretty good. 
And I'm like, yeah, you're right, actually. Matoshi, no. Richard Rosales. Eh. Yankovic. Are we scouting Yankovic? Or no, he's just already fully scouted. We just know who Alexa Yankovic is. Well, that's into contract, if I've ever seen it. Could definitely make a move. Ah, uh, Samuel Dahl. In the same report uh, twice. Or no, he was right before it. Yeah, this playlist is kind of slapping today. I don't know what this song is, but it's good. Good, like, uh, script writing music right here. Saidu Toure. He's got good pace. He's got goals in him. What do they want? Full wage, important player, inverted winger, guaranteed spot. Definitely somebody that we would explore as a deadline day addition. Oh, for sure. Definitely somebody we would explore as a deadline day addition. Good dude. Great agent recommendations. Really appreciate what they're doing. All right, Benny Traore. Oh, he would be okay with squad player. He wants some money, obviously, but... How about a non-promotion release clause, old Benny? He's okay with that. Literally minimum wage for a uh, non-EU player in the Netherlands as long as we put a non-promotion release clause in there. And honestly, we're 10 points clear at the top of the league right now. I feel pretty comfortable with that. Is this no okay? I have no idea. I've never heard this song before, dude. I have never heard this song before. Oop. Forgot to start the secondary recording. Hi, editors. Oh, yeah, this is Noah Kay. I just discovered this guy the other day, but he's definitely got some songs that slap. Saw him in concert in Tampa. He's fantastic. Oh, nice. Emmanuel Ogbadu. Uh, Leal would like to get rid of him. Well, I would like to have him. This dude looks like a freaking awesome player. Okay, Luis Almedo. All right, here's what I'm going to do. We got to go to our scouting priorities, and we just added a few guys like you and Mikaeus. Those two guys who might be first-team players for us right now. Oh, we're finishing our report on Max Caputo. That's freaking awesome. I want to hear about Max Caputo right now. Please and thank you. Oh, Toby Sibick got hurt, but he's about to leave. Toby Sibick leaves on February 1st. You didn't tell me anything, dude. That's a nothing scouting report. We need you guys to clutch up and actually provide information, okay? You told me nothing. Absolutely nothing. I need to know if these guys are good. It's the transfer window. We're trying to make some moves here. Sibe, thank you for the 29 months, brother. I appreciate the prime. That is a long time also. It's been good having you as part of the Hammers for, for that. Madison, thank you for the three months. An awesome three months. Let's go! Forehead. Some tasteful forehead just for you. Tasteful, guys. Tasteful forehead. Agents are better than scouts. Honestly, this year, that kind of feels true. Like, the agents just pop up with a guy, and you're like, this guy's better than anyone my scouts seem to have brought me. So... I'm going to roll with that. Scott Wera. Okay. Peter Vindal. Oh, we've got all the information. He's good. He's a very well-rounded goalkeeper. No no hate going his way. And then there's Ilyan Stefanov, who is a very versatile front, all-round type, uh, type dude, and his contract's coming up as well. But he's got a transfer already negotiated. No, zero, dude. You don't have to. I mean, thank you so much, though, for summoning yourself. I appreciate the prime of the 14 months. Thank you for supporting the stream of $5 of Jeff Bezos money. This guy already has a transfer negotiated. He is headed to Lokomotiv Plovdiv. Wow, way to get out and see the world, dude. Going from Levski, Sofia to Lokomotiv Plovdiv. Come on, man. Travel. Wow, Bordeaux. That sucks. 
Oh, they're in League Two. Okay. Yay. It's true. Like, that is true. Tristan Gilliar is not happy with his agreed playing time. He wants his expectations to raise. That's annoying. Want that to be formally recognized? Okay, please just go up to fringe player. Sweet. He's like, no, I want to be a fringe player now, dude. You better let me be a fringe player or I'm going to lose it. Like, how many games do you want to play in? Don't really care. I just want to be a fringe player instead of a breakthrough prospect. He's like, ah, all right. <laughs> I can't, I, I can do that after all. So we're playing Den Bosch. We need to win this match or else it's a disaster and we need to ring uh, multiple serious alarm bells. Um, we've got Avud Plintik. She's going to be on the back line with Bayer, Pereira, Nurio, Jose Rodriguez, Alex Lopez. Not Sinani. We should at least have one of the right wings that I like back. Do we? Nunez? Not 100% back. Not yet. Olivier and Chamin for Evan Rotundo, who was impressive, though. I, I be honest, I am definitely like team giving Rotundo a chance off the bench if we are if we are struggling for something. And then Torres, the most forgotten about guy on this team who holds down that left wing spot with the fury and fire of a thousand suns. Um, and then we have the Wolf and Asahas, who hasn't really gotten on the field yet. And then there's Vernerson, who's coming back from a bit of a knock, but he's fine. So I think we're good. They're playing. Uh, oh, that's fun. That's one to write home about. Okay, they're going with the ultra narrow. We are going to try and trap them outside, try and force them outside, make sure that we pay attention to their fullbacks. We don't lose them in that, but we should be able to really frustrate them if we try and get on the inside of their players. You got all that, everybody. Okay, I know it's the middle of a transfer window. Things are always up in the air, but most of our selling business is done, so everybody can feel good about that. For the favorites, we should be winning this one comfortably. We are at home. Let's continue our dominance here. We're missing our two starting right wingers, so it's Haitian Ruben Providence is shouldering the load for us today. Loans are so hard this year. Nah, dude, wait till deadline day. They're still free. Just scour that loan list, and there's still great loans out there for you to have. Great loans. Does the weather affect the game? Absolutely. Football managers are actually kind of obsessed with that. SI says that even the altitude affects the speed the ball moves. Like, it's clearly something they've spent way too much time on when there's bugs that are present elsewhere in the game. But, like, apparently even altitude affects the game. You know, and weather definitely affects the game, how cold it is. It affects the way the ball moves. All that stuff. They have three points all year. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They played 22 matches and lost 19 of them. They have three draws against Tapas, who's right above them, a stunning draw away against Hellman Sport, and they've drawn De Grafschop, who's in 15th at home. They have three points all season. They don't have a win all year. We're going and attacking. Uh, I'm actually going to make a few changes here. We're going to be – I didn't know they were that bad. What you want to do in that case is try and put a ton of pressure on them because the vibes are clearly terrible in the dressing room, so you want to force mistakes because of their bad cohesion and stuff, you know? So that's what we're going to try and do. Wow. They are terrible. Daniel Matos, thank you for the 18 months, and uh, solid dad joke. Appreciate it. Keeping the spirit of the dad jokes alive and well. Ooh, nice move. Nice goal. goal! Olivier in charm. Penalty and tap-in merchant, dude, I tell you. Penalty and tap-in merchant. He's never beaten the allegations. Penalties and tap-ins. It's what Polivier Pencham always lives on. He megged the guy for no reason. Moving to Denbosch from Portugal in three months. Well, the club isn't doing too hot in my save, so hopefully it's doing better for you. Oh. 
Uh, 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 oh, yo, yo, no, we're not, we're not messing around. We're not playing with our food. We shan't. I shallant. Top of the league against bottom of the league. 51 points versus three points. That's an incredible difference. I mean, this club did get relegated on goal difference by one goal on goal difference last year. But they were in huge financial problems. We came in, fixed the financial issues, brought in an entirely new team. Providence, square that, dude. What's my game speed? One over normal. It just is what looks most realistic to me. The normal one always felt a bit slow. So I'm one over normal. I think a lot of people play that way. Providence! Dang it. There we go. Square that. All right, good effort. Anybody seen LaQuincio? No? Okay. Guess he's not scoring today. I'm going to break out my sandwich. Made myself a lunch today. I'm going to be healthy and responsible since I streamed through lunchtime. We've got turkey and Swiss today. I don't think Den Bosch is going to have the quality to disrupt me eating this sandwich. I hope not. Massive sandwich time. Oh, yeah, Providence. That just feels mean. Ah, it just feels really mean. Let's get Joaquin Torres a goal. Wow. Okay. Um, when it rains, it pours for poor Den Bosch here. Jumpman picked up a little injury. He's out for the game. Come on, Torres, dude. I try and get you one goal. Ball don't lie. I mean, fine, but like, does it really matter either way? <laughs> I sevoed Plintix. All right, Nuria, just take this wide. I mean, they're forced him to defend that. Where's LaQuincio, dude? Jump. You're in the game to jump. Providence. Yeah, I thought. Joaquin Torres and Ruben Providence have been embarrassingly bad. Skip Patricio Nunez a shot in the second half. And Danel Sinani. I mean, obviously Torres did a 6.2 because he missed the pen, but the wings just... We've had the creativity of a newborn slug today. This is, a, this is the type of team you show off against. You know, we should be showing off. Newborn slugs are famous for their creativity, actually. <laughs> oh, huge if true, though. Huge if true. Asejas, the guy we loaned in, the Surinamese guy, is in for the first time. Jose Rodriguez just picked up an injury. Hopefully it's not too bad. All right, Danel Sinani. Out to Nurio. Nurio. Going to Nunez. Ugh. Pereira. Where's LaQuincio? The people cry out for LaQuincio. Asahas. 
Our Surinamese loanee. I don't even remember where he loaned him in from. And we loaned him in this stream. I have no idea where he came in from. I don't even care. I don't pay attention to any club but ours. You know, that's that's how real I am. Zayfuck, lay it off. Yes. And... Oh, it's gone in! Patricio Nunez with his first goal for Nock Breda. So the slugs need creativity to create the tens of thousands of teeth they have. Dude, if I was like microscopic, I feel like slugs would be super terrifying. Got some jalapeno chips, some oots, jalapeno chips. They're quite small. All right, guys, you guys know this forehead's legit, right? Anybody that's ever met me in person knows that this forehead is legit. I don't enhance this with filters like other Instagram models. This chip is massive. It's pretty good. No way, dude. Wow, he just got staggered. What what is what is Evud Plintix doing keeping him on? That was a big chip, dude. Oh, Patricio! I should make changes. It wants some time. Uh, we'll give it Evan uh, Polivier Pincham out for Evan Rotundo. La Quincio Zafalk out for Yuri Elselli. Just want to see how he plays at striker. Maybe he does something cool and I go, wait, well, I can do that again. You suck eggs anyways, Laquencio. Just kidding, I didn't mean that. These are massive chips, dude. Playing Selly at Strikers Criminal. Hey, he can play the position. I want to see what he can do there.
Oh, get down, Nunez! Goal! A hat trick in his second career match for the club. Patricio Nunez, the Argentine. He's picked up a bit of an injury, but he's picked up three goals as well for Nark Breda. Yeah, this is the result we'd expect from a top versus bottom match, exactly. So they got the name French fries because of their weak willed flip floppy nature. Somebody's never watched the French rugby team play before. Also, I don't know what kind of French fries you're eating, dude. You're eating soggy, flip floppy fries. You're eating the wrong fries. I like how it says, like, Jose Rodriguez injury sparks crisis, and I'm over here entirely unbothered talking about French fries. We're not in crisis because we have a good squad. Benjamin Jimenez, the guy that was signed before I got here and then happened to join in January. We have completed a loan out for him to Lommel in Belgium, which I knew. I always knew they were in Belgium. So that's actually freed up uh, a good amount of our wage budget. So it's not invested in Benjamin Jimenez, who they were paying like a legit first team player. But I am obviously not going to be playing him like a first team player. You know, we've done so well for the club. Can we invest in the club? Let's improve the training facilities. We've done such a good job balancing the books of this club. Can we just, like, can we just set up the training facilities or something? Who's better, Linton or McCooty? I don't know who Linton is, so I'm going to go McCooty. Yeah, the, the, it's somebody that studied history. The French perception after World War II of being like, oh, I surrender, you know. The only reason France didn't fight as hard in World War II is because in World War I, they lost literally an entire generation. Like, they, they, they lost an entire generation standing and dying while the rest of the world got its stuff together <coughs> to help them win that war. Ugh. They stood there and died for it. No, I had never blamed the French for that. When you study, like, the reason all that stuff happened. Not to mention, basically everybody except for my grandpa from that generation is dead now. So, Bragu, Zauder, Guyer, Mancelas, Sewellis, all all these guys, all of them. Bjorn Ingels, Vernerson, Uriel Shelley, Leo Cromantown. Keep it up, baby. Is it time for me to make more flushed away? It's always time for you to make flushed away references. Please continue to do so. When's our next match, dude? Is it like actually deadline day our next match is on? Uh. We let the history buff Z out. Yep, you've unleashed the history buff. I don't know what to tell you. Do you want to know how lucky Germany got 1940? Germany did not build the proper roads. Yeah, sorry, you've completely unleashed the history buff. If you don't like history, get ready for me to change your mind. Uh, in 1940, Germany invades France, right? Germany decides to swing through the Ardennes because France doesn't have fortifications built along that line. France isn't stupid, though. They have scout planes, right? And the French scout planes see that, I don't know, like a million Germans are headed to the Ardennes. And Germany's mistake is that they didn't build the roads up in a way that allowed all of those troops to get to the Ardennes efficiently. They did not, like the roads were not built for that at all. So essentially what you had was a gigantic traffic jam trying to get into the Ardennes. 
Like, huge traffic jam. The, I mean, you got to think about what it takes to get a... Mi like, you ever tried to go to a sporting event before? And that's like 50,000 people, maybe, right? You're talking about a million people, plus ammo, guns, tanks, right? Like, it was a huge traffic jam trying to get to the Ardennes Forest. And the French scout plane saw it. They saw it. They saw the whole traffic jam lined up like a target practice, and they went back to French headquarters, and they went, yo, yo. The entire German army is headed to the Ardennes Forest right now. We should do something about it, like, I don't know, bomb it or something. And the, the general literally thought he was over-exaggerating, didn't trust the information. Paid for that a little bit, huh? If they had, if you had done one run down that road with a bomber, Germany would have never gotten off the ground. They would have never gotten off the ground. The, most of the German hierarchy thought they were going to lose the war with France anyways. They didn't think their military was prepared enough. The only reason they won the war is because France's army was so poorly mobilized. It was not able to swing out of the, the line of defense along the German border the Maginot line, they, they weren't mobile enough to swing out so Germany could get the Paris before the main army could, and the French just threw in the towel at that point. Yo, they've invested $4.6 in improving the trading facilities. Wow. We made the club so healthy in one less than a year that we are literally improving the trading facilities. Also, they were French. Dude, literally get that out of your mind right now. The worst, stupidest stereotype you could possibly have is that the French don't have an excellent military culture or that they don't fight for France or whatever. I am already studying a coaching course. By the way, Abdurrahman Garib. Friggin' Saudi Arabia finishes third behind Iraq and Lebanon and then knocks South Korea out of the tournament the next round. Do you see that? Palestine did go through, even though they lost their last match away, uh, against North Korea, who ended up winning the group. Kuwait and UAE through. Tajikistan went through with wins over Vietnam and Oman. Thing is popping off. Syria beat Australia. Jordan beat Iraq. Qatar beat Palestine in the round of 16. Japan beat the UAE. Saudi Arabia beats South Korea. Iran beats India. Shout out to India for getting to the knockouts of AFCON, by the way. With a big-time win over China, India eliminates China in a matchup between half of the world. And uh, Garib got a 6.3 in the match, even though Saudi Arabia scored three goals and one. So, great work. Yeah, dude. Hey, if you're, if, you're, if you're English, particularly, if you are English and you're saying they surrendered because they were French is like a slight on French resolve... Who the hell do you think held the line around Dunkirk? Boy, you guys scampered into the boats. You know, the, yeah, who was holding that line? It was the French. The whole time. Did the French mortality rate defending the beaches at Dunkirk was nuts. Ask anybody that fought at Dunkirk who was the reason they were able to get off that beach, and it was the French. It was the French. Said, nah, it's an American view. Do you, don't. This is my Thunderdome. I live for this. Don't do it. Don't even try, Joe. Before you even get in the ring, it's over, right? Americans loved, yeah, classic American trope defending the French war record in 1940, you know what I'm saying? Only reason America exists is because of the French. That's very true. Yes. Dude, the prettiest is an absolutely psycho name. The prettiest is a psycho name, man. Younger. The American views that were solely responsible winning it for winning it, and we weren't.
we were the main driver of the war in the Pacific. But you, you know, the, dude, the main reason Germany lost was Russia. Or it was the Soviet Union at the time. Full credit to all of the Soviet republics that were involved in that as well. They're the reason that the European war was won. As an Englishman, I hate on the French because they know they're better than us. I wouldn't go that far. Everything you said is true, but I'm against giving the French credit for anything. Totally fair, dude. They can be snobbish about it sometimes. Totally fair. Oh, Ophelia. Who falls in love? No questions. Why didn't Germany invade Britain? They couldn't get control of the seas, dude. They could not get control of the seas, man. Dude, we didn't even get the offer into Benny. He deliberated greatly, but Benny Traore's decided to sign with Viking because he thinks their squad is better. Don't even care, Benny. I literally, I don't even care. Where are you, Benny? Traore, cancel assignment. Freaking cancel the assignment. I don't even care. I don't care. <laughs> do, do. Oh, Ophelia. Oh, they couldn't get out of the Britannia rules away. Oh, well, what, what, like, look, Germany's Navy was no contest for Britain's Navy, but what they thought they could do. If, if you guys don't find this interesting, let me know. But I love to talk about history because a lot of people hate history, and I think it's really interesting. I think if you hate history, you just didn't learn the cool stories in it. You just had to be told to remember a bunch of dates, and the class was annoying. But the reason Germany didn't invade Britain is because they could not get control of the channel for long enough to put a million troops across the channel, right? That was the reason they couldn't do it. Now, Hermann Goering was the head of the German Air Force at the time. Now, he was convinced that he could create an air buffer because the German Air Force was so great to where they'd be able to control the channel. Now, what Hermann Goering underestimated was the strength of radar, uh, as the British typically do and particularly did in the Second World War. They outsmarted their opponent. Um, they used radar and code breaking to devastating effect to kind of level the playing field. So with the radar and with the code breaking, they were able to figure out like where the attacks were coming and when. So the fact that the Royal Air Force was much smaller, they were able to optimize strategically the use of the Royal Air Force to keep Germany from gaining total aerial supremacy. Now, there are some people like so basically there was a giant air war uh, that if Britain had lost, Britain would have at least tried Operation Sea Lion, but they didn't. They, did never, they never gained control of it, and eventually they just kind of gave up and decided that eventually... Uh, Hitler was pretty convinced that eventually they would just sue for peace because they were alone, which wasn't a terrible thought process on his point, as much as he was prone to terrible thought processes. Um, particularly when it came to the United States... Uh, Hitler should never have declared war on the United States. He really did himself in with that one. Ragsy, thank you for the prime, dude. Thank you for the six months. Yeah, but yeah, like, look, Hermann Goering was an absolutely nuts dude. Terrible idiot. Um, really, like, one of he's basically a jock. Like, the head of the German Air Force. He was a... He was a Hey, I majored in history. My dad majored in history. He's a lawyer. My brother majored in history. He's a videographer. He was a professional videographer before we started working together, like had his own job and everything. So you can major in history and then use that. I, I think I think learning and understanding history is so unbelievably important because it makes it harder for you to get swept up in conversations and like the stereotypes. Like the one that we, you know, we started this conversation because you know, people were clowning the French for surrendering. And then that leads into, like, you got to understand, like, why? Like, it's not like, you know, they were any different. They just got screwed, you know? They got screwed by a couple of bad decisions. And the fact that the First World War, nobody got hit harder than the French, you know? Yeah. 
Germany messed up with the Russian invasion because they invaded Russia, dude. They were literally allied with Russia. They had no reason to do it. Uh, they did it because they thought they could pull it off and it ended up costing them everything. Yeah. Russia's the reason that Germany lost the war. It wasn't the U.S. Uh, Britain did a great job of standing alone and should always get credit for that. The whole, you know, Winston Churchill, we will stand forever and stand alone if necessary. Like, yeah, he's it, it, there were a ton of people that wanted him to surrender. Uh, and he deserves a ton of credit for standing and not surrendering. Because he basically stayed there long enough for Germany to do something stupid, which was attack the Soviet Union. And once they attacked the Soviet Union, 27 million Soviet people later, the Soviet Union was able to turn the tide. But you think about how many people that is. The reason that the Soviet Union, like the, the reason that Germany actually lost the war was the Soviet Union. Us showing up, D-Day gets overhyped. D-Day was awesome, like, as a historical event, and it's super impressive, and it's really fun to study, but it gets overhyped in terms of, like, the overall sense of the war. I think it had a huge psychological impact, which is part of the reason that it gets overhyped, but... Yeah, when you look at the numbers, like, the numbers of the Battle of Stalingrad, you just, like... <laughs> More Soviet soldiers alone died at the Battle of Stalingrad than American soldiers died in the entire war. One battle. One battle. Have you met any World War II vets? Uh, my grandpa, who I grew up down the street from, was an American radio man for the Pacific Fleet in World War II. That also helps a passion for history. Would you agree that code breaking was probably the thing that won the, won the war? I think that it saved a ton of lives. I think the Allies would have won anyways. But I think it saved a ton of lives and ended the war faster. Was the, the Bletchley Park code breaking that the British were doing? 100%. What's your opinion on the atomic bombs? I think that I can't have a fair opinion on the atomic bombs because there, there is a fact. Like, so my grandpa, who is still alive and who I've known my entire life, was in one of the organized regiments who was set to invade Japan. Uh, he was part, you know, the whole D-Day operation. There was going to be something three times the size of D-Day where we were going to land in Japan and have to take Japan. I, and my grandpa was part of that. He was going to be on one of the landing craft and going to be going to Japan to try and take Japan and would have had a darn good chance of dying. And so when it, I'm very fortunate to be in a position where you can meet somebody who would have had to go. Right. And when you meet somebody that would have had to go, they'll swear up and down that they should have dropped the atomic bombs and that that was the right thing to do. Now, did they need to drop the second one? Probably not. Uh, did they need to drop, drop the second one? Probably not. But there was the... There were different wars going on in World War II. The war between the U.S. and Japan was savage. Just... And the war between Germany and the Soviet Union was savage. Those two parts... Not... Like, war is awful. War is savage. But there was... Like, whatever little humility you can keep in war was lost in those two battles. Like in those two particular wars, there was uh, there were not a lot of prisoners taken. And when they were, you probably wish you were dead. Right. Like there were, you know. It was a particularly savage war. It was a little different than like the British and the U.S. fighting the Germans and the French resistance and the Dutch resistance or whatever. And, you know, on the Western Front was just a little bit more civilized than Germany v. Soviets and U.S. v. Japan. So the honest truth, and nobody can know this for sure, is that I think the U.S. dropped the second atomic bomb because it wanted to. Because it really, really wanted to. Because Japan didn't really have time to respond after the first one. We kind of just dropped the second one, and then... I mean, there's no proof for that. That's totally personal opinion. 
based off of all the documentaries and the audio books I've listened to because I don't usually read off paper. But um, I think where the, did the Brahms need to be dropped in general based off talking to my grandpa and like the fact that I'm kind of glad he didn't have to go and potentially die, uh, then yeah, I... I think they needed to be dropped, but every historian or person that studies history is going to give you a, a different answer. Usually you're able to back that answer up. Um, now, did they need to drop both of them? Probably not. Oh, there was a lot of that going around, dude. There was a lot of that going around. Uh, it, like the, in the U S was not blameless. The British were not blameless. Um, you know, we all did things during that. That war was nasty. World War II was nasty. World War I was nasty in the battle. World War II was nasty everywhere. That was a huge difference between the two. Yeah, that was pretty total war that was going on. You know what I mean? That was... Everybody was mobilized, and Japan and the U.S. hated each other for a very long time. Uh, in Germ you know, uh, in Germany and the USSR and what became Russia still hate each other. Uh, Japan and the U.S. are allied now, but that's kind of because the, the, the U.S. just, like, stayed in Japan for, like, 20 years after that and kind of ran the country. Like, people, people forget about that, but the U.S., you know, MacArthur was basically the president of Japan for, like, 15 years or something. I don't remember how long it was, but it was at least 10. But the U.S. still has bases in Japan, yeah. But the U.S. doesn't control Japan's government anymore. That's the difference that I, yeah. Yeah, it was sad. Uh, over 100 million people died in that war. You always wonder what the world would look like without it. But the world we live in today was shaped by World War II, largely. Um, that created the Cold War. It created, you know, the Korean War, the Vietnam War that the U.S. got involved in, right? It created uh, the catastrophe that's been happening in the stands. Everything that happened, like, you know, things build on each other. And everything that's happened after that is all a product of all that, non like, you know, all that nonsense. Back in 1940 to 45. Yeah, hopefully, you guys, like, I, who didn't know some of the stuff that I've been talking about? And what else do you want me to talk about now that we've kicked open the history uh, bucket? Anything else that I mentioned offhand that you want more elaboration on? China versus Taiwan. So for those, I won't talk about like current politics, although obviously like I'm kind of pro-democracy most of the time. I feel like that's pretty obvious, but not most of the time, you know, I feel like people should have their own autonomy, but the historical background of China versus Taiwan, right? Uh, Taiwan is also China. Uh, the government that runs Taiwan's lineage goes back to World War II. Uh, if you don't know, World War II did not start when Germany invaded Poland. It technically started when Japan invaded China. Japan invades China, and China at the time is this kind of fledgling democracy that 30 years ago, less than 30 years ago, had thrown off the Chinese emperors. So the Chinese emperors had ruled China, you know, a bunch of different dynasties and everything, but they ruled China for a super long time. Uh, and... The last one, Peng Shui or whatever his name was, like 1918, around there, maybe right before there, got overthrown. So there was kind of a fledgling democracy going on in China. Now, that's a huge country with a ton of people. Very hard to run a democracy, you know, in that type of uh, environment. Say well, listen to Murigara. Yes, bench. So Japan invades China. Japan kicks China all over the yard. But China, to its credit does the whole, you know, just digs its heels in and loses, but just refuses to give up. And Western China is a very hard place to fight in. There's like those supply routes, the railroads didn't really reach there. So Japan could not eradicate the Chinese leadership and the Chinese army. 
Um, now, before this had all started, there was a communist movement in China. That was Mao Zedong. He's hanging out kind of near where Mongolia is today. Right? And Mao Zedong is leading the communists, where Chiang Kai-shek is leading this democracy that rules most of China. It's not all of China what it is current day, but it's most of it. And when Japan attacks, Chiang Kai-shek and Mao Zedong and a couple of other random warlords form like the Chinese coalition to fight Japan. Those are the guys that got their ass kicked, right? They get blown up. China didn't have the resource. It was like Russia in World War One. They didn't have the resources. They didn't have the organization. They just got smacked by a country that did, right? Um, who elected Chiang Kai-shek? I actually don't know for sure, but he was a technically a democratic leader so at least nominally it would have been the people of china i'm sh you know the u.s i'm sure european powers were also involved in that uh but chiang kai-shek would have been elected by the chinese people in at least name uh it, it was a fledgling democratic state chiang kai-shek was you know like i'm not going to use a modern example because i don't want to dive into modern politics but like there are those people that it, they're technically democratically elected, but they're kind of the strong man of the country. That's what Chiang Kai-shek was. That's how you think about it. Not a dictator, right? Like not rigging the elections where like, yeah, I won 98% of the vote, but like the person that's just been in charge for a while. So anyways, they get blown up, right? They get absolutely blasted. And uh, things get really weird in China because the US never retakes China, right? Like the war never really re-enters China. Uh, the, the Soviet army, after Germany gave up, they sent all their guys to Siberia and invaded Manchuria, which is like Northeast China, right as the atomic bombs were being dropped on Japan. So Japan, let me get this match started and I can keep talking here. So Japan gives up as China's invading Manchuria or as Russia's invading Manchuria. Sorry. The Soviet union is invading Manchuria. Got to get it right. Don't make anybody mad here, but you know who I'm talking about. Uh, so China was never really taken, taken back, right? Like China had to be pieced back together. And in that process, Chiang Kai-shek was kicked out of China and he took his government and they became a government in exile in Taiwan. And then Mao Zedong became the leader of China in this post-World War II state which really freaked out the U.S. And the reason there was a Korean War was essentially because the U.S. was really angry that China had become communist and there was that whole who's going to be democratic, who's going to be communist, you know, like over this whole, you know, the next 30 years, that's what everybody cared about. Uh, that's why. And so China immediately becomes communist. It took about five years after the war and then it kind of settled in. And Chiang Kai-shek, the, the origin of Taiwan is that Chiang Kai-shek, the guy that was leading China before World War II, that helped fight against it, stayed alive, right? Hanging out in Western China, bothering the Japanese, not surrendering, all that stuff. Um, he went to Taiwan in government in exile. And so Taiwan is technically just another government of China, right? Taiwan was a part of China at that time. It then became a separate entity because Mao Zedong was ruling mainland China and Chiang Kai-shek was on this fortified island and China never went to take it back. Now, what got really complicated is that the U.S. normalized relations in the 70s with China. China was like a closed state, not dissimilar to what North Korea has going on up to this day until the 70s. But then Nixon was like, yo, manufacturing and, not, and stuff. And so Nixon, before he became what we think of Nixon now, the president went to China uh, and they agreed – on a you know the framework of a deal to open relations between the United States and China, which was a huge blow to the Soviet Union at the time, that made them really uncomfortable. Uh, the basis of the deal is that the United States would nominally agree that Taiwan was part of China, and basically anybody that interacts with China diplomatically, economically, even like LeBron James in the NBA has had to deal with this. You can't say Taiwan's its own country. If you do that, they'll get super mad because basically China wants everybody to acknowledge Taiwan is part of China and like an autonomous region within China. That's why when Taiwan competes in the Olympics, they're Chinese Taipei. But Taiwan has no, there's no Chinese authority in Taiwan. It's a democracy. It's independent. It's got its own military, considers itself its own country. And it, it is its own country, but it's not even allowed in the U.N., because in order for the UN 
to have China in there. In order for the UN to have China in there, they had to acknowledge not having Taiwan in there. So Taiwan is the largest entity not in the United Nations because of, of that. And so that's the origin of the whole China-Taiwan situation. So nobody cares? I mean, somebody asked. <laughs> somebody asked. And that's the answer. Yeah, so when they're at the Olympics, they're Chinese to I play. Honestly, it's like China's being all weird about it, but China could just not participate in the Olympics or make them participate as Chinese athletes, but they do let them participate as Chinese Taipei. Right, and in FIFA, they're Chinese Taipei as well. So if you ever wanted, if you wanted to be educated on the China-Taiwan situation, it's good, you know, that's one of the flashpoints of world politics. It's good to know about that stuff. That's the whole history behind it. Let's go, boys! Away against Stadio Den Haag, and then we've got our transfer deadline day kicking. No, it happened to John Cena, too. Everybody, I mean, like, if I was making $25 million a year from China, too, I wouldn't really care about how I worded Taiwan, either. But John Cena had that really funny video where he had to apologize literally in Chinese to China for saying that Taiwan was a country. Yeah. So when weird stuff like that happens, now you know why. But Taiwan is entirely independent. You can travel there. Um, Hong Kong is not anymore, obviously. That's the difference between those two, as people always ask. A food de plintich. So also somebody asked about the American Civil War. Most entertaining, I mean war sucks, right? But like as a in terms of the storylines, insanely entertaining read. The American Civil in, in a war that absolutely nobody else cares about at all outside of the United States. Nice, dude. I thought that was a goal. I was literally starting the sentence nice goal. <laughs> Torres. Pletinks. So it's Pletinks, I think. Pletinks. Sorry. Number one thing you pick up in history is that all these controversies that people keep freak, freak out about, and they're like, this is the worst ever. There's always something that's happened like it before. It just repeats itself. Plettings? So it's Avud Plettings is my center back's name. Is that it? Plettings? Kind of hoping we'd just be able to breeze a dub so we could keep talking, but. Looks like we're going to have to dial in real quick. Giving up the early goal from a pretty lazy looking cross. Torres should have crossed that early. That's no, going to be a pin. Obvious. Dude, there, that is weird. We gave away some really cheap pins earlier in this stream, but we are getting the cheapest pins back now. Holy Jeez. 
A Polivier Pincham with his 16th goal of the season. What a year for Polivier Pincham. What a player. Thoughts on the fall of the Library of Alexandra, Alexandria affecting LeBron James' legacy? I just feel like that if we still had all the knowledge contained within the Library of Alexandria, that society would have advanced fast enough to get flopping out of the NBA before LeBron James was brought around. So I really feel like LeBron James would have struggled uh, late in his career to maintain his relevance uh, through his theatrics, you know? But um, that, that, yeah. <sighs> You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. So the fall of the Library of Alexandria has allowed LeBron James to extend his career. Um, yeah. <laughs> you got. You're asking the important questions today. You know, Providence, y'all, bro. Love your edited YouTube vids, mate. Yo, have a nice. I'm glad you enjoyed them. Pass that love on to Gadget. He's the head of the live channel, my dude. He does a tremendous job. A real tremendous job. Who's winning the Spanish Super Cup? Yeah, I'm going to go Barca, but it'll be a good game. I'm leaning Barca. Jordan flopped too. Look, I, I think LeBron James is probably the best basketball player of all time. Doesn't mean that flopping hasn't helped him preserve his career. Now, if we'd advanced as a society to develop officiating technology that would allow us to weed out flopping because the Library of Alexandria didn't burn down, then maybe his career would have ended a little earlier. You know, Michael Jordan, I think, is the, the winningest, best winning basketball player. But if you're talking talent, just raw talent of a player, LeBron James has more raw talent as a player uh, than Michael Jordan. Um, but... That's a debate you could have forever. The same way you can debate, you know, who's the best ever pay uh, player? Pelé, Maradona, Messi, Ronaldo, either one. You know what I'm saying? Lavinia, we have a history podcast. It just only has two episodes in like three years. It's a passion project. I, you know, I do it when I have time. Thoughts on LeBron's hairline? Ageless, man. Keeps bouncing back. Things bounced back more times than Jose Mourinho. Uh, don't lose faith. We're creating a lot of chances. Dude, Ruben Providence just does not have a lot of mental resiliency, man. He folds pretty quick. Avud Plentix. 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 Evud Platinks is um, also a little nervous, but Providence is on a 6.4 wall doing that. So I'm going to go with Uriel Selly because we are short a couple of, couple of wing lads today. How many of you guys watch uh, basketball? I feel like basketball is a pretty global sport now. I love basketball. My two loves of sports I'll play every day of my life and watch every day of my life. I, I don't really love the NBA, but I love basketball. Playoff NBA is sensational, but the regular season is just lazy. How is that not a goal? But it's basketball and soccer, football, or those two sports for me. Yeah, it's hard to, like, 82 games is the basketball regular season. It's, uh, too many goals, so I don't enjoy. Ah, you know, there's a flow to a basketball game. There are runs. There are big shots. There, It's a fun sport. Fun sport. Good God, Bayer. Good God, what are you? Jesus. Fire! What in heaven's name is going on back there? There's like a five alarm fire going off. Off the freaking field, dude.
here. He oh, my dude, weird. Our ability to win the ball back is just atrocious right now. We're, we're not even getting near the ball. All right, I'm going to let this um, shout expire, and then we're going to make some changes. Away. I don't have an NBA team, no. Uh, I grew up in Tampa. There just wasn't one around. Orlando's an hour and a half away, so. I've been to a few Orlando games, but I'm not an Orlando fan. Dude, why are you shooting that? All right, it has expired, so we can find out whose mentality is dragging us down. Danelle Sinani, you're in. Uriel Shelley is nervous. Say well, since freaking out. So, Jorge Mutagata, you're in, dude. All right. Do, do, do. All right, LaQuincia Zafalk. It's going to come in for Lopez, who wasn't playing well anyways. We're going to have Aldricus there. You're there. Polivier Pincham there. Advanced playmaker on attack. Um, go up to attacking. Be a little more aggressive. I left Trap outside on. I was too distracted by the history talk, dude. I was too distracted by the history talk, and I left Trap outside on. That's why we've been so funny with our closing down today. That's all on me. All on me, brother. Dang it. I, 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 did, I was in the middle of the history talk, so I didn't want to acknowledge it, but uh, I'm very happy that Aldrikas has scored two in five minutes for Camber in real life. That is awesome. Kyrie reminds me of Neymar. That's actually a tremendous comparison. That's spot on for somebody that's adopted the game. Away! Ah, oh, it's over. We're fine. All right, good. This is a good time for a highlight. We can score here. Still look to win the game. Polivier Pincham out to Danel Sinani. Well worked to Aldricus. That hold up play. Wow. Put plenty on that pass, didn't you, big man? It was Steph Curry and then LeBron. Uh, LeBron's Ronaldo. I would say, oh, get in. What? Goal! Like we scored, but at what cost to my own mental health here? He passed this. My striker's teamwork is so high, he passed that. Just shoot the ball, dude. He's not even looking at the goal. Passes it back to Sonata, who does well to finish it, but like, what are you doing? What are you doing, Aldrikas? Yeah, I was going to say Lionel Messi is Steph Curry. Uh, just in terms of, I think Steph is the most skillful, creative player you know in the nba and obviously he's won a lot been the mvp a couple of times now i'm not saying that steph is the goat though that's the difference now Jokic is um <laughs> there's no comparison for nikola Jokic. there's no, the, like axel witzel but the best player in the world like <laughs> Is he on? Jokic isn't Kane. He's won a trophy.
No, Nikola Jokic is the best basketball player on the planet right now, if you've never heard that name. He is also a large, not particularly in tremendous shape Serbian man with unbelievable skills, like just an unbelievable gifted, skilled player. And then when you're 7'1 and you've got those kinds of skills, like, oh, no. Way to get your hips through, though. Excellent defensive move there from Laser to shut that angle off. Delusion, thank you for the 22 months, too. Thanks for supporting the stream. Jeff, thank you for the 35 months. Ian, thank you for the 16 or the 6. Jokic is not Lewandowski, really, at all. Uh, Jokic is in a very, like... Hey, wait, 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 wait. Did you just say A.J. Brown quit the Eagles? Sorry, this is very important for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playoff... Uh... What? No, he didn't just wipe his socials. Apparently, this guy's reporting. This is the Eagles reporter for uh, one of the websites that. There's no A.J. Brown at Eagles practice. Yeah, but not being there, even if you're hurt, dude. He also wiped all Eagles pictures off his Instagram and deactivated his Twitter account. Okay, this is probably a more reasoned take, though. Let's be real. Stop the speculation. A.J. Brown deleted all his socials and hasn't been at practice because he's frustrated. He know he's hurt and he's not playing against Tampa Bay on Monday. Season went from 10-1 and one with our grip of the one seed to the five seed. Let's not look too far into this. Oh, I am a Bucks fan. I will look too far into this. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are playing against the Philadelphia Eagles on Monday night in the playoffs, and their best wide receiver didn't show up to practice? I will look too far into that. Are you kidding me? Photos, though, thank you so much for the prime. Yeah, one of the best players on the other team that we're about to play in the playoffs is not at practice. I'm taking everything from that that I can. We did not score the winning goal. It's a 2-2 draw. We weren't good enough. Um, you look disheartened. You you played well. Evid Plentix is Plentix is is not not feeling himself there. You scared of it. That's uh, thank you so much for telling me about AJ Brown. Because that uh, he and their quarterback is hurt. Jalen Hurts is like trying to recover from an injury. A lot of fun stuff going on now. Gabriel, thank you for the seven months, dude. <laughs> what I'm understanding is the Eagles are imploding and forfeiting to the Bucks. Yes, basically. Have I seen the weather forecast for the Bills Steelers game? No. But I have seen the weather forecast for Kansas City against Miami, and it is hilarious. I don't know if you guys realize how cold negative 30 Celsius is, but let me look this up for you. What is negative 30 Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit in Celsius? So it's negative 34 Celsius in Kansas City. So, curious to see how that's going to go down. And they are playing outdoors. What's the Bills game? So Dolphins Chiefs is going to be minus two Fahrenheit at kickoff with wind chills up to minus 15, which is about minus 20 Celsius. 
or sorry, about minus 15 Celsius. They basically match up, I think, at that exact degree. Um, in Steelers, Bills is going to be 21 Fahrenheit at kickoff. That's negative a few Celsius with 20 to 30 mile an hour winds and two to four inches of snow. So if you have ever watched the NFL or you've ever cared to, this weekend might be a great time because there will be, there will be some epic playoff games in absolutely frigid condi uh, conditions. It will be as tough as tough American football can get. Should be fun. Should be a rip roaring good time, honestly. Oh. See if we can move Davey Bregu. We'll float an offer out for Davey Bregu. Who are the guys that we were scouting? Mikes, Agbadu, Georgie Tunjov ended up being bad. What happened to the Australian? Oh, Max Caputo. We don't have another report for four days. So, oh, we have enough. We know that he's an incredible team player, great mentality, very smart player in that attacking midfield spot. 21 years old, definitely deserving of a move to Europe. Definitely a difference-making kind of attacking midfielder, Agbadu. Dear Lord, he would be the best player on my team, Emmanuel Agbadu. Would they do a loan? It's deadline day. No. That sucks. All right, what about Mikelas? We know nothing about him. Come on, dude. I want to spend some money, all right? Who doesn't love a seven to six con? Honestly, for me, for me, the best version of American football is playoffs in the snow and it's freezing. Because all that flashy nonsense is out of the way. It's just, you know, you're just snow shoveling your way across the field trying to get the ball. But like, that's, that's the best. Bet you love the Iowa Hawkeyes. Hell yeah. Root for them all the time. <laughs> My MVP this year, uh, McCaffrey. I don't think any quarterback deserves it this year. Yeah, but the best version of American football is just snow, frigid playoff game, especially in a team like Miami that throws the ball everywhere. Like, just perfect. Wait, I will wait for you. This guy can see the future with that kind of anticipation. He's a really fun player. Max Caputo, very fun player. Australian national. Is this the big splash play that we want to make? Oh, my goodness, it is. You know why? Polivier Pincham is going to move down to defensive midfield. Oh, God, I have too many defensive midfielders if I do that. I won't forget. Olivier Pincham is going to move down to being a playmaking regista. And we bring in Max Caputo to play as an attacking midfielder. Holy Toledo, dude. I'm telling you, brother. We've invested in new training facilities. We're set to be promoted. Life is looking freaking fabulous. What should we pay for Uldrakis also? 3.2. They're saying we could get that money back for him. Even though we spent a ton of money on Robert's Uldrakis. I might do this then. His vision's pretty bad. Yeah, but he's not uh, the playmaker. He makes the runs in the box. His incredible work rate, his anticipation is off the ball. He feels plays develop. And then he's able to get to that play, you know? There's Kalebe. Who am I kidding? This guy would be better. <laughs> This guy would be better than Caputo. Caputo's a different type of player, 
Right, and Caputo has ranges, and so the way they set this up is always off the lower part of the... Caputo's so smart, though. He's so smart. He's so smart, and Kalebe is like a defender, which we don't really need from this point. Kalebe is a better passer. I mean, he's not a better passer, he just has more vision. But the intelligence of Max Caputo, he, he just feels the game. He feels the game. He's 21 years old. There's a bright future out there for Max Caputo. He's 1.4 million, and Kalebe is 24,000. Sixteen to eighteen decisions, right? He has fifteen to eighteen anticipation. Composure is high as well. He can receive the ball in tight, pressurized spaces and make a play. Good mindset, good determination, great off the ball movement, tremendous team player that helps facilitate when he gets involved in the box. Kalebe's a darn good player, though. Kalebe's a darn good player with great adaptability that wouldn't want to get paid a lot of money. He's surplus to requirements at Rieka. Kalebe's minorly, minorly injury prone, so I'm not super bothered. Por que no los dos? Uh, we could. They're both better than the guys that we got right now. I mean, if we can find a move for, like, Petros Mantelos, then I would say yes. But Mantelos, we're paying Mantelos literally nothing, and he doesn't expect to play, so there's, like, quite literally no reason to get rid of him. We could cancel Rotunda's loan. We're not actually able to do that. But Evan Rotunda is one of those guys that would find he would find himself to be redundant, even though I like the you know what he was able to bring us last time. Just buy someone. I mean, we're going to buy someone. Trying to figure out which someone we want. Mikaos also looks great, but we can drop Polivier Pincham for Caputo or Kalebe. I'll pay you 500000 They said no. I'll pay you 750000 for Caputo. We'll also start to... We'll, we'll start the process with Kalebe. He's cool with that. I mean, dude, you're surplus to requirements, man. I, I'm not playing this game. Non-promotion... I feel very comfortable with non-promotion release clauses considering how far we are. This guy's looking at a final season at the end of his contract. He'd be 29. Cool. We got rid of the salary raise for getting promoted as well. So we have a con we've got our contract in for Kalebe. We're working on Caputo. We're going to go for both. Sibic's headed to Helsingborgs. We are going to try and move that other winger. So Sibic is gone. Unsure about selling a useful depth option. We have other useful depth options, to be honest. Don't think it really matters. Uh, Hartog has enough potential. I'm not going to do that. Caputo's bid rejected. So they're very, very hard set on the 1.4 million is what I'm hearing. So Mr. Pressing Forward that doesn't like big matches and isn't particularly versatile. How about a million? You want the 1.4 for Max Caputo. I, I feel that. I do. We wait. The only smart move is to wait. The only smart move is to wait. We'll bring in Kalebe. He's a great cheap option. The only smart move is to wait. Best outcome for everybody that he's wanted to leave. Davey Bregu. We have the offer out on. It should hit here in a second. Go here. Frickin' Kaufman, man. Crumman Town. Old Patricio Nunez. I feel bad for Evan Rotundo because he's shown us some good stuff. He's just not good enough to be around my team anymore. All right, we got... Uh, we got... Hey, Brega, you want to find a new club? I'm happier. Of no oh, okay, 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 okay. 
disappointed how I've handled this? I mean, obviously, I just... I'm going to put him on the loan list. I didn't sign you. You were here when I got here. I didn't really like you. Uh, it's an end of contract deal. I'm such an idiot. Wait, I'll have the opportunity to buy him now, won't I? We'll just accept it and we have the opportunity to buy him now. Now you give me the opportunity to buy now. Yes. For 22000 Beautiful. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad I remembered the rules just in time. And he's here. My boy is here. Kalebe, the 26-year-old Brazilian signed from Rijeka in Croatia. How do you end up there? He was at Fortaleza. He was purchased for a million there. Rijeka bought him for 115000 to move to Europe. And then he fell out of the team at Rijeka for whatever reason. I think he's good. I don't care that he fell out of the team. He's a good player. He's got goals in him. He knows how to play with the ball. Good passer. Not a bad athlete. Guy's a good player. Takes the minimum for a non-EU player in our league. 22,000 to buy him. Like, are you kidding? How many Latvian players uh, can you name besides Jumpman? Zero. Absolutely none. Gabriel, though, thank you for the seven months. I appreciate you. Thank you to everybody that subbed for supporting the channel. Enjoy your ad-free experience. This time. Oh, we got 50. Hello. Old Van Zippity Duda. Nope. Louise Sameto. Wow, he's okay fall off much god oh ooh, ooh. Well, most of these guys we're gonna have seen before except this guy who's got tremendous strength and touch and jumping reach and i i see the few i see a martin vitink fan club growing here Everton, love it i think he's trying to sign for the wrong team here Man, you love this guy, and I don't. So he's four full stars, and I'm out. <laughs> I am super out. I feel so bad for this Jenny guy. He's just not uh, not playing anywhere. You hate big matches. I've known that for a while, so I'm going to say no. All right. Uh, you know what, Vodka? I'll just let you keep popping up on my list, but I don't think I'm ever going to like you. We're in a good scouting groove, though. We have a good selection of players at every position, guys that make sense. Guy doesn't have high enough potential for me to want to keep an eye on him. Already not liking you, and you're a little afraid of big matches. Ho! Uh, that's Cape Verde. Yvonne Alves, two national team appearances for Cape Verde, 31st team appearances for Fafe in the uh, third division of Portugal. Fourth. Fourth. So he's in the Portuguese lower leagues. 15 to 20 touch. Unbelievable athlete. Great holy trinity. I'm literally going to sign him right now. What the agent said it would be 230,000. I'm literally going to sign him right now. I almost don't want to sign him because I'm like, if we go to another club, I'm going to want to sign him then. But this guy's going to, I want this guy to play for me at some point. You want an after appearance fee? Sure. I'll pay 210 up front and lower the appearance fee to 40, and you got it. He plays attacking midfield too. We just opened up that spot in our team by dropping the other guy down. We just signed Alebe. We're improving our team dramatically on deadline day, and that costs us next to nothing that dude is one of those people that the moment you see him you just know your life will never be the same like that he is so talented overall wow wow and that was an agent 
That was an agent that came to me and was like, hey, he's available for 210000 if you want him. He's in the Portuguese fourth division. And I'm like, dude, I'm watching this. I'm watching five seconds of film. Like, <laughs> you know, this dude's in the fourth division. The fourth division of Portugal is a farm system for guys like that. That's where we found like Ja Silva, FM Saint. We found in a very similar way. We played against him in the lower leagues of Portugal. And we were like, yo, that dude. Yes. Okay, so he should be on our end of contract list for a year. Afshin Sultani. Well, this is an Arsenal Iranian youth player that, I mean, just immediate total interest there. Like, would love to loan him in at some point. <laughs> it's already an Iranian international player from the Arsenal Youth Academy. Like, there's some... Uh, some quality players kicking around. I don't know why all of a sudden we're getting a bunch of recommendations from the English leagues. That's usually where you never want to sign dudes from. Chips, thank you for the two years. Wow. Appreciate you. NDRW99, thank you for the 10 months. Yeah, and he had 19 to 20 determination. I mean, it's the best Cape Verdean wonder kid I've ever seen. I already can tell you that. Yeah, the super low division agent offers where they go, hey, I think my player could play at a better le like level. Do you want to help him do that? And you're like, I would be honored. <laughs> I would be honored to help him do that. Asen Mitkov, an inter-Bulgarian. Nice. Liam Scales from Hibernian. Okay. I'll give him. A, I'll throw a scout his general direction. Lasse Gunter, no, and Sir Lord, Sir Lord, Sir Lord Conte. Not touching it. Not touching it. It is utterly mandatory that he says yes to that. I'm not touching it. All right, he wants a minimum fee release clause. No, this dude is the ticket to the promised land. Absolutely not. I will sell him for $100 million next year, as far as I'm concerned. We're going to remove both of those clauses. We're going to raise his wage to 312. He also has Portuguese nationality, so he's EU. Please. I have a friendly relationship with Andre Figueredo, which is why he brought me this absolute gem. I just didn't want him to auto-reject it, but I wanted to get rid of all of the raises. We'll give him that right now. Just make sure the release clause isn't there. Guess you might want to stick around uh, for a little bit so you can use him, honestly. Maybe we might stick around to this club a little bit just so we can use this guy, but let's see. He's about to join our club right now. You guys ready? The dude's a god-tier shadow striker. Absolutely god-tier shadow striker. Uh, he needs to work in his passing, obviously. He has, a, he has a pretty significant hole in his game, and it's his passing. But this dude is a god-tier, hard-running, gagging-pressing shadow striker. Uh, explosive, unstoppable-type shadow striker. Um, I've never seen somebody so pigeonholed as a shadow striker, but that fits our team. So, like, I don't really have an issue with that. Uh, Mantelos is off for Kalebe, Sanani, Nunez, Uriel, Ch uh, Uriel Selly, and then you go there, and then Alex Lopez goes there, and our new team is set. Uh, you have a personal player instruction to be a shadow striker, Mr. Alves. 
And we are... Oh, I mean, like, he has great determination, bravery, but, like, he gets after people. And so, dude, I swear, uh, he's he's a really, really good player. Really, really, really good player. That potential, and, I mean, we just paid 200000 for him. I think you could sell this guy for $20 million in, like, a year and a half. Like, the financial security of the club was just guaranteed with the signing of Yvonne Alves. Instant starter at 18. We just sold a backup, like a reserve team right back that didn't have a lot of potential for 57,000. We'll take that. But he's driven. I mean, driven is something you can see. That comes from having a high... Um, a driven is something that comes from high determination. The only thing that affects driven is high determination. Or that causes it. Sorry, Davey Bragu, you were very kind to me early in the season, but it's time. You know, the funny thing is, I actually can't do that. I'll have to figure that out off stream because as much as I've been encouraging and participating in the application of a fix to the new GAN, I actually don't know how to use it yet. So I'm going to have to sit down and learn that. I don't know how to do I don't know how to use the new GAN fix yet. Sir Power, thank you for the 21 months. It's just for you guys, you know? I mean, I love the new GAN pack. I just, um, yeah. I ask for trust. I mean, do I not have your trust? We're building, you know, all this amazing stuff. I make two deadline day signings, two more very talented players that join the club and they're ready to rock and roll, right? David, thank you for the prime. Thank you for supporting the stream. Hell yeah, brother Irish Pierce. Thank you so much for the year. Congrats on your golden bacon. You have made it a year. Big ups to you. Oh, yo, we just got an offer from Homestuds for Vernerson. He may become unsettled if not allowed to speak to them. I don't know. He's 31. So that's a pretty wild... Uh, Augustine Pereira speaks fluent Dutch. Torres speaks good Dutch. So our team's acclimating as well. The becoming Dutch. It's like 1.1 million for backup left back Victor Vernerson. What's the con when, when does Vernerson's contract go up? That was pretty good. Yeah, I'm taking it. I'll take that money for Victor Vernerson. Also, if he's going to get upset and start to be angry at us anyways, if we don't take it, he's, he's all yours, dude. What does it mean for the club to have signed Yvonne Alves? Satisfying transfer. He can turn uh, draws into wins for sure. Will he give us a big edge? That's why we signed him. We think he can uh, do that. We acquired a top player. Uh, Nurio speaks Portuguese. Yeah, I asked Nurio to help out. Um, uh, not getting into debate about how many attacking midfielders we have right now. We've got enough. That's for sure. Are you concerned that Alves is of a different age profile? He'll bring a fresh perspective. Yeah, I know we don't have a lot of wonder kids, but Ivan Alves is the real deal. I have every confidence if Ivan Alves does happen to stay at the club for a while, he will become a legend of the club. And why would also why would I take that deal? Because we can actually sign uh free players. So if I did want to say go add a youth player, why are you on the end of contract list? Patrick Capozo, who's on a month to month, you could go in and try to make an offer for Capozo and he comes in and all of a sudden he's hanging out. Planet Sigma Olamuk in Czechia. And Ali Abid, of course, the 
left back for the Mauritanian national team. We are aware of his existence. We could bring him in as well. He's a little more expensive on the wage front. Both those guys are. But um, that's it. That's it, isn't it? That's all we got. Because that one Ukrainian guy isn't free anymore. All right, well, Verderson out for $1.2 million. Covers all of the transfer business we've done all year with the sale of a 31-year-old backup. And we have Monday Akile who can play over there. That was a well-timed sentence. He just got hurt. But it's not that long of an injury. We'll be completely fine. <laughs> you reckon you get all your coaching badges at Knock Breda? I mean, they are funding my B license right now, uh, which means I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to fund an A license as we go up to the era de Vizy. I don't know, though. I mean, we have no idea what the future holds in this save, and that's kind of the beauty of it. You know, we know we're not staying at Knock Breda forever, e forever either. You know, Brazil was calling my name last time. Or somewhere in South America, the biggest South American clubs all rejected us after we won the African Champions League. So we've come here to prove it again. And we, I, I like to think that we have proved it again. We've proven that we can build winning clubs on multiple continents now. And hopefully we can finish this run in the season and, and end on top of the league and get this club promoted back into the uh, era de visi. Gan Gan, thank you for the 10 months. Appreciate you. David, thank you for the prime as well. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. Enjoy the ad-free experience. Thank you for supporting the stream. Do I have an end goal? Yeah, to become the best manager in the world. We want to see how fast we can rise to the top of the game. Oh, no, Marco Bizzo. Is getting an offer. He's getting a contract offer from uh, Goetzeborg. Club will fund coaching course. Yeah, that's fine. I'll add a non promotion release clause, which is something he really cares about. He wants to play in the area of Izzy again. He's going to be mad about that. How did he take that? I just got rid of a promotion 35% wage increase. All right, dude. Marco Bezo. We've negotiated. I would imagine he'd take that. I would be very surprised if he didn't take that. Uh, da da da. Patrick Soko. He's not very good either. I don't I don't really like that guy. I don't know why he was on my good list. He doesn't offer a lot of skills. He doesn't have the athleticism to not offer a bunch else. <sighs> Zealand, my friend, thinks you have a huge forehead. Do you have something to say to him? No, he's right. He's totally right. He's jealous, actually. It's okay, I get it. You look at this and you're like, man, I want to look like Harry Kane too. Not all of us can pull it off, you know? Clock Speak lost their manager. Not a surprise. I mean, you know, the dude turned out one of the all-time runs. Oh, God, Caputo's good too, man. Problem is both those guys really only work in like one position and it's the same position, Alves and Caputo. And Alves was a lot cheaper, so I'm glad we were patient. I'm very glad we were patient. Caputo was one of those guys we'd sign at the end of the year once we made sure he didn't hate big matches. And are you guys ready for this debut? This is going to go super hard. Are you ready for this debut? Uh, dude, Abdul Rahman's still not back. They must be crushing it in the Asian Cup. He must have just not played in the next match. I just assumed Garib was back. They're in the final. Pulling a Portugal right now. They finished third in their group, and they are literally in the final. So what was the last match? You had Iran beat uh, India. Dude, North Korea's in the quarters. Tajikistan was in the quarters. Tajikistan beat Lebanon to get to the quarterfinals of the Asian Cup. North Korea beat Kuwait. The quarterfinals are here. It was Syria over Jordan, Japan over Qatar, Saudi Arabia beats Iran on pit. Tajikistan! Wow! 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 
It's an amazing semi-final run for Tajikistan. Their first ever Asian Cup semi-final appearance. It's their first appearance in the Asian Cup knockouts of any kind. And they've beaten North Korea 2-0. It's Syria, Japan, Saudi Arabia, and Tajikistan in the semi-finals. And it went the way you would expect. Japan with a 3-0 over Syria. Saudi Arabia beats Tajikistan 3-0. And it's Japan and Saudi Arabia. But what a run from the Tajiks of Tajikistan. Way to play, boys. Way to play. Nunez still only cleared for 45 minutes of action, so he's still coming off the bench. Brian Lays is starting over Jonas Bayer today. I'm just mixing it up. I love chaos. What can I say? Muruha. Muruga. Muruhara. Muruhara. Muruhara, the Peruvian. I'm practicing. <laughs> Oh, our team is set up so perfectly. We even have a natural shadow striker in behind. Oh, Ziff. Oh, I just, yeah, I can't see him. He's over there. Got it. We do need a, a striker, perhaps. That's where Rotundo goes here, and Sonani goes in as the substitute or the third striker. Actually, we're going to go with Kaufman. Instead of Rotundo, Kaufman's a more natural advance forward that could back things up for us. Shout out to Kaufman. He backed himself, and now because of injuries and no, you know, not because he did anything good, he is now here. Ivan Alves, where Alves wearing number seven. Go get him. <laughs> Makes a good shadow striker. They essentially have a striker's attributes, but they are natural as an attacking midfielder. <laughs> Sons of the Highlands. That would be a great name. Tajikistan, Asian Cup semifinal, dude. South Korea wishes. The favorites we should be winning comfortably. Ivan Alves is down for that. It's us against Young AZ. Oh, great. Young AZ is about to scout Alves so fast. <laughs> yeah, it's Jaden Adai for sure, dude. That's Jaden Adai for sure. Taunton legend, Jaden Nadai. One of those players that's remembered in the annals, even though he's not a, a an FM saint. Jaden Nadai, what a what a player. An incredibly serviceable signing for Taunton. Dude scored, I I think, in the Euro League final. Europa League final as well. Or he scored very late in that Europa League run that we won as well. He was part of the Europa League winning team, and we signed him while we were in the championship. Doesn't seem like I rotate a lot. How do I keep such a large squad happy? I keep playing time expectations very under control. They're not all happy, but the vast majority are. The main reason I have such a large... I would prefer to have about three or four, like three less players. is because we've been continuously improving the team and we haven't been able to get rid of all of the players that we signed to make the team good initially. But we've been continuously improving the team over the year. So, like, signing Alves and everything. Like, Petros Mantelos has no place in the team anymore, but we're just going to let his contract run out to the end of the season. Bjorn Ingels isn't a starter anymore, but he's still on the team, right? Uh, even Davey Bregu, the guy that was signed before we got... Like, there were a couple players that were signed before we got here that we've just had to live with, like Davey Bregu. Oh, Torres taking him to the cleaners. Oh, there's Ulderikis. Cross needed to be two yards closer to the goal. Snowy, thank you for the 16 months, brother. I appreciate you. Shivers, yeah, I know. There, there's some players like that. The original one, he doesn't get a lot of shouts anymore, but Yase Toymanen from Bate was the... Original player that a lot of people were up at arms that he didn't get sainted. But there are, you know, Barrientos from Oriental Dragon was another one.
What's your favorite squad size? We talked about this earlier, but about 28 to 32 dudes I'm usually comfortable with. Wow, we got destroyed on that set piece. He Shin, Jamal Blackman get shouts every once in a while. The block man. He had a very good career with a 6'7", 260 pound Jamal Blackman. Dude, was a beast. Well, that's not 10 seconds. Pretty lazy there from Augustine Pereira. Pretty lazy. Laza. About to go for the volley of the century here. Nario. Eric Mendez. I mean, Eric Mendez is sainted. Makuti is sainted, yeah. Goodness gracious. All right, dude. We dominated the entire first 30 minutes of the match, and we're down 2 nothing, headed towards halftime. That sucks. Oh, come on. Like, what is that, dude? What, e what even is that? I've never seen that. Dude, headed it back in so violently hard that it deflects off. They didn't have a shot in the first 30 minutes. Unlucky. Where, where's the unlucky? You've been really unlucky. Take a breath and give me what we did in the first bit. We'll be okay. That was a, 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 that, that was a truly absurd 15 minutes there. We just... We, we, oh, I gotta take that off, dude. Freaking trap outside. I have to take that off. Ruben, get up. I know you're not hurt. First time we've seen Alves take a touch and a highlight. Mudahada. They have a they have a dude named Asahas too. I have a dude named Asahas on my team. I didn't know that was that common. Olivier and Cham. Oh, nice effort. Nice effort, Pencham. Need to get a first goal early. I don't I don't want to be chasing multiple goals later. Oh uh, yes, great job forcing that touch backwards. Great commitment to the bit there from Olivier and Chom, which is his issue at times. Now we've got the overload on the wing here. Nurio getting it moving. Alves. Torres. was in the air for an hour and a half, dude. We have a great bit of run of play. I'm going to go with attackings. A little bit more aggressive of the mentality. Plantings, why? Dude, Ruben, you're the first one I'm taking off, by the way. You haven't done diddly squat recently, Ruben Providence. Oh, run. Yes, run. Oh, look at the middle. Look at the middle of the field. Pass the ball. Thank you. Come on, Alves. Oh, but he's.
How did we not? Get him! Oh. Explain that to me, like I'm five years old, how we haven't scored yet. After this highlight, it's change time. Ah, uh, yes. Love that. Nice touch with the uh, shoulder there, Pereira. That was fun. All right, let's play a game called Where's Robert Soldrikas? Found him! Because Zay Wellison, uh, Brian Lays is on a yellow. So, was, you know, we had four guys in a yellow for a while there, but Byers coming in. Uh, Ruben Providence coming out for Patricio Nunez because he's got a little bit more ability. Yeah, you can feel the comeback now, can't you? Comeback's on now. Comeback's on now. Let's go. How long left in the season? Like, uh, 12 games? 12, 13, 12 games? There he is. Roberts Oldrikas. How's Alves doing? It's his first game. So hopefully he's about to bag us a goal and be amazing. All right. Augustine Pereira. Looking. Torres is never going to win that, but I appreciate the thought. Yo, Alves. Oh, Alves. Love the, the predatory nature there, Alves. I mean, we're all over him. The second half has literally just been us all over them. All uh, right, Nurio. Victor Wernerson hasn't left yet, so I can bring him in. Oh, I trust you to make a difference, Victor. It's probably your last appearance for Knock Breda, so go make something happen, dude. Herrera, Alves, love the movement, love the movement, love the aggression! Goal! And it's finished off by Joaquin Torres. And it's 2-2. They are flowing their way back into this game. And it's the young Cape Verdean international, Alves. An unknown quantity right into the starting lineup at 18. He stirs the drink. And Joaquin Torres with the finishing touch. And it's 2-2 as Nock Breda chase the two-goal comeback. Play tinks. They've backed off any sort of pressure in this part of the pitch. It's Say Wellison. Patricio Nunez, the Argentine. His first playing in Europe. Trying to make it stick. He had a hat trick last time he went on the field. Still working his way back from the injury he suffered during that hat trick. Say Wellison. Patricio Nunez now. Wellison, they've got options in front. It's Alves. The 18-year-old's not been shy in his first match in Knock Breda Colors. I'm going to go very attacking. And Segundo Volante, um, Olivier Ncham. Good old Olivier. I'm going to get him off for uh, Alex Lopez, actually. I trust Alex Lopez. Dude started most of the season. He's a good player. Chom's in a yellow. He's exhausted. Alex Lopez, give me the last 10 minutes. Thank you for not diving in on that tackle. Thank you so much. He wanted to. You could see it in his eyes. We're good, we're good, Chubbs. Thank you so much for the 32 months, brother. Thanks for supporting the stream. Oh my goodness, Joaquin Torres! 
That was a save. Corner. Torres. Play Tinks. Stay on him, 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 stay on him. Didn't feel comfortable doing this for anything more than a few minutes, but we'll do that there. This will keep our pressure on here. Wish I had LaQuincia Zafalk, but he's hurt. Oh, Torres! Oh, you knew it wasn't a highlight for the set piece because he was taking it when we cut to the set piece. Tragic. All right, let's see if we can win this ball back. We did, yes. Bayer, Alex Lopez, Victor Vernerson in his final game here. Joaquin Torres up towards Alves, I guess. The Mute. Happy to spend Jeff Bezos' money today. Well, thank you so much for the two months, dude. I appreciate you. Let's score a goal for that. Torres. Joaquin Torres! Oh, it deflected right to him. Oh, that could have gone anywhere. Vernerson. Vernerson. Alves. Alves taking him for pace. Floating the ball. Good heart to come back. Man, we should have won that game. Got to set a higher standard. We weren't good enough. We got to be better. We're nine points clear top of the league now with that draw. Got to be better. Got to be better, guys. Can't just putter around like that. We got to be better. Yeah, Alves was looking busy, though. That dude was involved. So, sorry, the question from Basel. Thank you for the 13 months. What's the dumbest, funniest war story fact you've ever heard? I probably have a different answer depending on what day you ask me, but there was a general in the Confederate Army in the U.S. Civil War named, uh, well, Stonewall Jackson was his nickname. Um, there's Jackson and his men standing like a stone wall. Whatever. Uh, Stonewall Jackson used to suck on lemons, but that's not like the funny, the funny part of it to me. The funny part is that people go out of their way to note that they have no idea where the lemons came from. Like lemons would just appear with no like return address or anything, they would just appear in the camp, like in a box addressed to him. And he would just eat the lemons. He never said where they came from. He never addressed it. And everybody was always weirded out that he was just sucking on lemons and nobody knew where they came from. <laughs> I, I don't know if that qualifies as, that is definitely like one of the dumbest facts that I know. But uh, my boy Stonewall Jackson would just suck on lemons and nobody knew where the lemons were coming from. Yeah, he died during the war. He got shot by one of his own, uh, like one of his own sentries, which is a tough way to go. What is the answer? Dude, I have no idea. Yeah, a lot of people think he was autistic. Um, that's just historical speculation, though. He was a very weird dude, but a hell of a, he was a hell of a general. Everybody agrees on that. So he used to be a professor at Virginia, uh, Virginia, Virginia Military Institute, VMI which provided a lot of officers for the Confederate Army. Um, and he was a professor at VMI when the war broke out. Apparently, he was a terrible professor. So he would rehearse his, like, monologue for the day, right, you know, before. Like, he would have the whole thing memorized. Like, it would all be written out. What he Like, every word he would say for his entire lecture. And if you interrupted him... He would pause and then restart the entire thing. So, like, let's say you got 20 minutes into the lecture. Like, you know, you were 20 minutes into the lecture for that day in, you know, Professor Jackson's class. And you interrupted him. He would literally pause and, like, look at you and then go back to the beginning of the lecture and then start it over. Because his perception was that the lecture was perfect. And so you must have missed something in the lecture if you were asking a question.
But I can also imagine the first time you discover that being the angriest you've ever been at a teacher in your entire life. But the dude was one of the Confederacy's best generals, and he died in 1863. And Japan has won the Asian Cup for the first time since 2011. It's the Whappities that are Asian Cup champions. After Australia won it in 2024 and Qatar's 2019 triumph, it's Japan back on top. Saudi Arabia is still waiting for their first win since 1996. But we do have Abdul Rahman Garib back, so that's cool. Yeah, he was shot by his own men, yeah. He was shot by his own men. Correct. Him being autistic is obviously speculation. The dude died in 1863. We have no idea. But, like... <laughs> Yeah, he um, he was shot by his own men. They like um, the way that happens in war. By the way, is like the general will go out with a, some of his top aides to scout the battlefield, right? So like they ride out on horses at night, and they'll scout. You know, because especially in like eighteen sixties, right? It was we know what the battlefield's gonna be. We're gonna fight there tomorrow. Like let's go scout the battlefield. So you'd ride out in the cover of darkness with the general. And, you know, a trusted complement of horsemen and uh, a couple of aides and you'd ride around the battlefield and you would assess like how everything looked. Uh, and he was coming back from one of those nighttime rides to assess the battlefield and around your camp at night, you'll have pickets. Uh, these are troops that are spaced out. They're essentially the watchmen, you know, like the night watch. So you can't just walk into the camp. Um, and one of the pickets saw the approaching group of horsemen. Uh, the pickets thought that it was a group of Union horsemen and fired on it. And they shot him. Yeah. Now, the real conspiracy theory, the real conspiracy theory is that the guy who had the pickets was just really mad because he had Jackson as his professor like 10 years earlier. <laughs> it was like, this guy sucks. Like, I gave him a terrible score on rate, my professor, and just poof. <laughs> Got him. Screw you. You gave me an F on my essay. But that's how it, so when, when, he, when you say like, oh, he got shot by one of the sentries, that's how that happens. Like it's nighttime. He was, the guy was jumpy. He thought it was like a union, you know, because that sort of thing would happen all the time. The cavalry in those days, the cavalry would ride over and like kill a couple of pickets and like steal some supplies or whatever and burn a building down and then ride back, right? Little raid just to remind him you were there. So he wasn't like, it wasn't absurd for him to be sitting there thinking it was the Union Cavalry coming over for a little raiding action. Um, it just wasn't. It just happened to be one of the most important generals in the entire army. And uh, that guy probably felt like a bit of an idiot the next day. Why do you know this? Oh, massive nerd. That doesn't just extend to uh, this sort of stuff. I love history. I read about it. I watch a ton of documentaries. Um, if you ever want to learn about the American Civil War, there's some absolutely tremendous historical fiction that's based off the diaries of a lot of the generals. Um, God, what are the, what's the name of the, oh, there's three books. Killer Angels is one of them, but I feel like there, there's three and Killer Angels is just one of the three books. Tremendous read. Abs I read the first one in a day and I don't read. I listen to audiobooks, but I read the first one in a day. Gods and Generals, thank you. Gods and Generals is the name of the three book series. It is fantastic. Victor Vernerson sold for one point two million. Hell yeah, brother! Only good Confederate soldier. I mean, fair point. Although, as with most wars, you know, I, I don't hold what the Confederacy was fighting for writ large over the you know, the incredibly large number of Southern Americans that died just because they were fighting because all their friends were fighting, you know? Most of the, I mean, honestly, when you think about how rural America was in the 1860s, most of the people that were fighting in both of the armies that were smashing against each other in the Civil War had never been more than 15 miles or 10 miles away from where they grew up. They had very little idea what the hell was going on at all. They were just there to fight because that's what you did. You know? And uh, millions of them died. It was a real 2% of the entire U.S. population 
uh, died in the American Civil War. Just... <laughs> Have I, ever, have I ever been to a Civil War reenactment? Yes, I have. For the Battle of Crystal River in Florida, I went to a reenactment for that. A uh, family outing. It's kind of fun. Cannons were loud. How much is that in millions? I think it was like 2.3 million uh, Americans died in the U.S. Civil War. Um, yeah, but we were talking about the Soviet Union in World uh, the Soviet Union in World War II. 27 million Soviet people died in World War II. That was a whole other level. That was you know a war to extinction almost that they were fighting. But the U.S. Civil War uh, uh, the U.S. Civil War was still nasty. Wow, dude, really? Abdul Rahman Garib got back from Asian Cup. He's been gone for a month. He gets the flu and he's like, dude, I want to extend my vacation a little bit. Hey, boss, I have the flu. Taking my time getting back from the Asian Cup. They literally got all the way to the final. He gets back, gets the flu. Good gracious, Garib. I like for I mean, by the time he finally plays again, I'm going to have forgotten he's on the team. Yeah, he got a hair transplant, dude, for ser like seriously. Yeah, him and Vincent Abubakar link it up. Bezo has had his contract extended. Nice, Bezot. Good deal, dude. Good deal. Have I ever read the book series called The Core? No, I have not, unfortunately. My brother does a better job of reading than I do. Jackson died of complications from pneumonia weakened by the amputation of his arm. I didn't really want to get that specific, but yes, he died about two weeks after he got shot, but he was never okay again after he got shot. He got shot in the arm, lost a ton of blood, you amputate the arm, and then he gets sick because the whole amputation process isn't exactly the cleanest process ever invented in 1863. So he uh, died from that, yes. But uh, he would have lived if he hadn't been shot in the arm. <laughs> Like, I, I feel comfortable saying that. My, if he hadn't been shot in the arm, the guy probably would have lived a little longer. He was also in a war, so it's not like he was going to live forever. Do, 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 do. Do, oh, yes. Ibrahim Mbai can play left back. That's awesome, dude. We're just going to spot up Ibrahim Mbai and play Augustine Pereira on the right. And then I'm just going to... Do Patricio, how are you never fully fit? It's like it's the eighth mystery of the... Like the eighth wonder of the world is how Patricio Nunez is never fit for a match. It's ridiculous. It's been fit for one... Like fully fit for one match since I signed him. Why are we upset? Oh, because we drew the last match. We've actually drawn the last two couple of come from behind draws let's just not give up goals early in the match does that sound good oh right also don't do that don't trap outside thank you <laughs> that is an important part of this process uh zay wellison from mudahara legs are going to be nice and sharp out there today and um joaquin torres is all right in the last game but i i'm not liking what ruben providence has been doing so we're going to try Danel sanani um, we're going to have Augustine Pereira try a game where he's on fullback and attack. All right, here we go. Ruben Providence, you haven't done enough to impress me lately. Stick to the plan. Be patient. I'm going to go with a full wave of I have faith in you. Didn't really do much. We're away against Telstar, who haven't won in at least five. Let's get after him. Know much about Soviet history? Uh, No, not a, like, not... An incredible amount. Probably a lot more than the average person. Like, we were doing all the World War II talk at earlier, but I know the general flow. I'm not going to be great on the details. You know, I know the 
uh, World War I and the Revolution, and then you've got the Red Army against the White Army, and that was a whole nasty other bit of business that kicked off after World War I, and then, you know, the consolidation of power by Stalin after Lenin, and then I, I don't, like, outside of, I, I don't know domestic Soviet history, like, after World War II, really. I'm not super familiar with, like, domestics. I know they're, inter they're international stuff, obviously. How much do I know about geopolitics and global uh, globalism? I mean, I know enough, like, to know that both of those phrases could mean so many different things. Uh, I think geopolitics is just history with a fancy name, to be perfectly honest with you. Oh, nice ball, say Wellison, Joaquin Torres. Oh, dude, why is it? Oh, Torres is having that. Get in, son. Goal! We are in the Joaquin Torres era right now. The guy whose spot in our starting lineup has never been questioned, who provides quality on quality on quality, assists, goals, great carrier of the ball. That's what I'm talking about from Joaquin Torres. That took a nice deflection, but it's probably going in either way. He made that happen, advanced the ball, put in an average cross, got to the end of it, smashed it into the back of the net. Try and keep our advantage comfortable over full and Dom, please. This team is way too good for the second division. I mean, we did beat two Eredivisie teams in the Dutch Cup before being smited in the round of 16 by Herenveen, but we have built a very, very good team in the Dutch second division. A team that was initially predicted to finish fifth when we took over after being relegated on goal difference. The board was in charge of transfer business when we took over, actually. <laughs> but then we sold all the people that didn't want to be here and built a team of players that wanted to be here and wanted to make it happen. You know, there's not a lot of rules in the Dutch second division, so that was... We used my global ball knowledge. Oh, have it to now. He went for too fancy of a shot, honestly. Just needs to crack that into the net. You may wonder how three wingers got hurt in the same match. Well, so do I. I think they just have Nick Lima on the other team, a fullback that's out here claiming souls with a couple of slide tackles. I don't want to hint to complacency. We are up 1-0, but any team can score a goal. They've got a Hlavenberch up top. How much do I know about Brazilian history? Probably as little as you could possibly expect me to know. South America, I'm a little more limited generally. Brazil in particular, I just don't know a ton. I, I just I just don't. There's always so much more history out there to learn. But like Pedro and the Emperors of Brazil and stuff, I don't I could not tell you how that came about, how that ended, like Great way to ward off complacency, guys. Great work. Great job making sure we didn't get complacent there. Really tremendous job. Dude, it went through your legs, Platings. Their first shot of the match, two minutes into the second half. No, we got a lot of time. We should be okay. We'll just slowly ease our way forward so we get better runs. Oh, again, we've not played that to Uldrikas. Why? Oh, that's a good ball. That He was off. Dang it, Torres was off, not Sinani. That was close. Very good look by Torres. Good movement by Torres. Goodness gracious. We're just sputtering our way back into an interesting title race, aren't we? Mm. 
Nice. Polivier Pincham playing another sparkling ball out to Augustine Pereira. Please hit this towards Zoldrikas. Thank you. As we'll win the header if you hit him the ball, dude. All you got to do is hit the ball his direction. We're going to win the header. All right, Nunez is in. We do have Zafalk back, so we could make a striker substitution if we wanted. It's not something we need to be super afraid of. Um, Augustine Pereira is not done particularly well. Sebream Mbai is going to show up, and Monday Aquile is going to take the wing back spot on the left, and we're going to be uh, real aggressive at the fullback positions. Do, 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 do. We do have Kalebe. Joaquin Torres is looking a little tired, but let's. The two changes I know I want to make are those two changes. We got one guy having a bad game and one guy who is better than the guy he's coming in for. Nunez over Sinani. We just haven't gotten the same control over the match after this. Say well, assumed is a real player played in my team in uh, Brazil. Terrible player. Well, he's been good for us. Well-rounded uh, midfielder. Not, not great at anything, but just, you know, has, has a round set of skills. G guys, can we figure this out? There are two of us over there. You just have to knock the ball down instead of touching it back into traffic. We just get just a terrible giveaway. Nice take by Mbai. Nunez should be able to do a whole lot with this. He's done none. Absolutely nothing. Uh, and now he'll make his own space. Oh, great ball. That is spectacular. That is a spectacular, perfect ball from Mbai. Oh, that is, this is how you utilize him. Mbai just chipped that ball in the air like seven yards away from goal. Far enough the goalkeeper can't get out there. Mbai is not one of the better crossers on our team, but that's exactly how you get Oldrikas involved in the game. Jumpman is here. Here to save us, dude. Here to save us. All right, let's uh, assess maybe some fresh leg substitutions. We can bring in Alex Lopez just to get rid of the nerves of Olivier and Cham. I don't know why he's nervous, but whatever. Um, we do have some heavy legs from, say, Wellison. We do not want to bring in another nervous player, though. All right, Ivan Alves is more of a goal-scoring type player. Well, you're nervous. Why are we nervous? Where are these nerves coming from, dude? You're completely fine. So Avud Plentix just coming off for Jonas Bayer. We have one substitution left we can save if we need anything, but I feel like we'll be able to see this out, hopefully. Oh, corner. Where are we going? Near post? Oh, nice pass, Torres. Couldn't find a way through. Akile. Say Wellison! Say Wellison again! <laughs> so close. Oh, Wildrikas didn't even jump. Didn't live up to his name there. Feel like that third goal's on the way and we'll be we'll be comfy. Alex Lopez. Plays, uh, say, Wellison. Make them press the center backs. That's a nice re-entry to the defensive midfielders. Alex Lopez. Great ball to Nunez. Good save. Very direct. Good stuff. Sean Dyke. Oh, dude, can you imagine what Dyche could do with Oldrakis? Guy belongs on, like, Daisha's Burnley. Love that little one, too. Mmm. Terrible hit. Uh, 
I can't even watch, dude. I see him on two shots for the whole match. We've regained total dominance, but we're only up a goal and they get a corner. That is my waking nightmare. Oh, Patricio Nunez. Wow, Patricio uh, with, with, with some Darwin-esque finishing there, actually. This is the history of the Nunez. <laughs> nice work, everyone. Uh, wins are what matter, and we got the win on the road. Maintained our advantage over Fulendam. Dude, Camber's falling all the way to fifth. Who's who's up in the third uh, period? Probably us, honestly. We won the first period. We are top of the league in the third period with 5-1 and two drawn. Young Ajax trying to get their Hellman Sport. So because we've already gotten a playoff spot, Hellman Sport is actually in the playoff position because Young Ajax can't get a playoff spot. So it, us and Emin are already at least in the playoffs, so that we're obviously looking to win the league. Oldrick is top of the league with 18 goals. Olivier and Cham has 16 goals. He's hanging out. It's a bold decision we've made to drop him to the Regista position. Very bold. Disappear. So Camber is still not guaranteed any sort of uh, playoff spot right now because they're losing the period to Hellman Sport. What uh, what are the what are the periods? So there's like four periods, and if you finish top of the league, the highest team that hasn't gotten one already, like a playoff spot, gets one from being the highest team left in that period. So it's a bit of a convoluted system, but it rewards you for being in a hot streak at a certain point in the season. Camber's who we bought Aldrikas from, and they're they're a very good, competent team. Mostly pins for a job. No, he scored a lot of goals. Ah, I forgot about the playing time promise. To Mantelos. How to increase the club's reputation? Win trophies win there 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 are a few other things like signing real high reputation players right doing you know tours and like china and stuff but you want to raise your reputation in football manager win go win games go on to the field and go win matches and you will raise your reputation in football manager that's it Uh, just goes the highest team league into the season uh, if number one already has. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, so because I've got a playoff spot, then that passes a playoff spot down to somebody else if I finish in the top two, because top two is automatic. But past that, the playoff spots are allocated through the stages, the periods. Jackson, thank you so much for the four months. Jose Mourinho's got the right idea, dude. It, winning is everything. And in football manager too, whatever, if you're winning, don't question it, right? Win the games, win the trophies. You don't remember finishing in third and putting up a lot of XG, right? <laughs> as much as you may be able to sit there and complain and like, oh, he should have been up there. You remember when you win five trophies in one year in South Africa, you remember that forever, Right, your first a your first African Champions League title. Right, you remember that forever. I dominated the National League and Cups in Wales and played in both Conference and Europa League, but I can't raise my reputation. Oh, you will. Don't worry. Make it make one Champions League group stage. Like, let's say you get a really easy, um, like a really easy playoff draw. It's for you if you're in the Welsh league, continue to dominate Wales, but it, you're you're playing a European game now. Your goal is to get into the your, your Champions League group stage. Elevate yourself.
That's uh, It's all about a Champions League group stage run for you. That's where you're going to get your reputation from. Yeah, he's out on loan and definitely should be gotten rid of into contracts, so that's totally fine. A lot of Americans in the Dutch League, I'm noticing. Like, a lot. Hanging all around. What's up, Mr. Saucy? How you doing? Yeah, this guy isn't good enough anymore. See you later, my homie. Why did the... Oh, this guy was the coach at Knock Breda. Nice. He's the one that got them relegated. He's been hired at FC Eindhoven in the same division. Yeah, well, maybe if you hadn't sucked... Oops. How many Dutch players are left in your team? Zero. We don't have a single Dutch player in our team. Actually, that's not true. Bayer. Jonas Bayer. No, nope, he's Danish. Sorry. <laughs> Gooey. My boy Tristan Gooey is Dutch. And LaQuincio Zafalk is Dutch. He plays a decent role in the team. Uh, that's it. The, oh, Evod Plintix is Belgian. Close. Uh, Asahas is Surinamese, so also close. Uh, that, however, is it, I believe. Tino Kaufman and Chromantown are both Dutch, but they're like reserve players. Oh, dude, our keeper. Yeah, Marco Bizot is Dutch. Uh, our, our keeper Bizot is the only starting Dutchman on the team. We do have a few in the rotation like Zafalk and the Gooey. But that's it. Couple, you know, obviously our youth team and our reserve guys like Tino Kaufman and Lorenzo Chromantown are Dutch, but. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you know the club captain and goalkeeper who's been like an irreplaceable, immovable object in the team the whole year? Yeah, he's Dutch. But honestly, most of the Dutch players, people are willing to pay a lot of money for them. And you know, these guys coming from Africa and South America, the <laughs> right, the people, they, they charge a lot less money to get those guys into the team. Leza has stubbed his toe. Heavens help him. All right, Lays is out, Byers in, and we are in need of the Goo Master. Another Dutchman into the team. Har, matey. The Dutchman. Does long time. Bizod got Dutch nationality. I don't know, dude. He plays, he has a cap for the Dutch national team. That's all. That's all I know. That's Dutch enough for me. Emmanuel Agbadu. Yes, I am aware. I think he's awesome. He's big and strong and manly. He's got the jawline of a Greek god. I am aware. But he also has 1.8 million, and we don't have 1.8 million, do we? Do you have that lying around somewhere? Because if you do, let me know. I'll be happy to take it off you. It's a long time. All right. Patricio Nunez is finally able to freaking start again. I am so happy to have him back in the starting lineup. Thank you. Welcome back, Patricio Nunez. Wow, man. Old Matthias DeWolf not exactly uh, slaying it on the development front here. All right, what do they got? 
We already made that change, so we're good. We don't have the funneling players the outside again, although we might want to do that again here because they're being very, very, we're scared of you with the way they've set up their team here. Hello, Camber. You're fifth in the league. Why are you playing an 8-2? Let's go, boys. Let's get that win back up on the board, shall we? How do I get notable events in the bottom left screen? Uh, that is because I'm using the Zealand skin. Am I, uh, there's obviously a way to do it without using the Zealand skin, but that's part of the Zealand skin. Let's get the notable events down there. Oh, a third time through the playlist. Hell yeah. It's in. Ah, oh, what a deflection. Camber was a team that was ahead of us at the top of the league for the early part of the season. They've just, uh, they've been found out, really. I think that's what everybody knows. Everybody's saying it. They've been found out. Oh, classy ball from Patricio there. Oil me up, Zealand. Did you steal their striker? Uh, yes, they had Aldrikas and I stole him. Oh, Torres! That shot from Encham was vicious if it had gotten through. Oh, man. Shins, thank you so much for the prime, by the way. Thank you for supporting the stream, dude. Their keeper just missed that. Torres. Oh, yo. What's this play uh, playlist called? I knew this was the top of the playlist because I went to Spotify and created a radio station off of Season of the Sticks by uh, Noah Kahan. Or Kahan, or I don't know how to say it. But I heard the song the other day. I was like, oh, that's a good song. So I just made a radio off it. It's been a good radio. Oh, Elvis! Oh, it was almost a magic first goal for the Cape Verdean youngster. Yeah, he's got some separation ability, and we are once again dominant, so I'm going to go up to attacking just so we make a bit more aggressive runs, you know? And it's Aldrikas! It's Robert Aldrikas! The jump man! Down from the stratosphere! Into the back of the net! Twenty-one goals in all competitions for Robert Ulrikis, the Latvian Superman. <whistles> oh, it does not get old watching that giant man soar through the air. Oh, we're so there. So there, Murata. Oh, yo, 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 chill, chill, brother, chill, chill.
try a different approach. I'm not giving the complacency talk. I'm just going to go out and say, hey, guys, great first half. We deserve to be in the lead. Impending immediate concession. There we go. Get that momentum back now. Very balanced attack from us. They're all about attacking our left wing, so we'll go ahead and uh, square that up. Bring that back to positive. Not be quite as aggressive with that kind of overlap nonsense. Bring in Ruben Providence, because whoever I start at right wing sucks. That's just the rule. Uh, I'm going to bring you in and put you back as well. Ibrahim Mbai and Jonas Bayer is going to stay out there because I don't really trust Bjorn Ingels. He's not a defensive option. At least not one that I'm happy with. And we are going to drop uh, Olivier and Cham, who's picked up a bit of a knock and trying to recover from it for Alex Lopez. Hi, I got faith in you. Have a good one. I believe in you guys. Nice. Oh, Torres picked up a knock. That sucks. That dude's been playing like every minute recently. No matter what happens, we're going to want to get him off so it doesn't get any worse. Let's go with Sanani, and then we'll get Alves for Kalebe. It's a better possession player. Help us maintain the ball instead of just keeping him company up here. Alves didn't have a bad game. It's a bit of a no-show, but... If I choose in-swingers on corners, I can't even add players the opposite foot to take the corner on that side. Nope. Hold right. Dang it. You can, however, take... If you have one penalty taker that's just, like, really good, you can do this and go to corner takers and set Uriel Telly to take from both sides. So you can set, like, one taker to take from both sides, basically. Nice. All right, Lopez. There you go, Nurio. Daniel Sinani. Murata. Yes, Lopez. Banger. Nurio. Oh, yeah, Daniel Sinani. He wants to run. He wants the smoke. He wants Ruben Providence for some reason. And by just float this one into Aldricus. We know where this is going. There it is. Come on, Roberts. Smack that son of a gun into the back of the net, dude. What you were built for. It's what you were born for, Roberts. This is what you do. Smack that ball into the back of that net right there. All right, Bjorn Engel. Nope. Forgot I was out of subs. Fair play, dude. Thought I was saving one. Hey, Las Vegas, thank you so much for the prime. And Dreamweaver, thank you for the prime. Thank you guys for supporting the stream and for spending $5 of Jeff Bezos' money to do it. Enjoy your ad-free experience and access to the subsection of the Discord and all that nonsense. Oh, let's go in by. Come on. What all? Oh, how dare you, Hoogma? Wait, is that that guy? It's not the, the, no, wrong guy. That Swedish guy we almost signed on loan at center back. He had a similar last name. Dude, the keeper's up. Just volley it. What are you doing? Where's the quality in our team? Just volley it whole field. Like, what, what do you mean you can't score from there? That was not an easy game. They made it tough. They they, bat, they gave a heck of a halftime talk because they really got control of the game there for a little bit. But we've managed to put three points together against Canberra as well. 
And Full and Dom are trying to hang with us. They've strung a couple of wins together, but we are creating some pretty serious separation here. Joaquin Torres was just a bruised knee. Oh, you big softy. Come on. You're fine. Oh, massive game for Helmond Sport. If they're still top of the league uh, for this period, they have a playoff spot on the line in this match. Said Ansi's better than Heiko? I don't know, dude. Heiko won two Ballon d'Ors. It's hard to argue with somebody that's won two Ballon d'Ors. Two Ballon d'Ors is two Ballon d'Ors. I realize that's a pretty matter-of-fact sentence, but two Ballon d'Ors is two Ballon d'Ors, and that's what Heiko Reinhardt won. He didn't win it with us, but... How many games do you get uh, the definite win? I mean, we're only nine points clear, right? I've seen crazier things happen. We just get a nav, you know, we still have our match coming up against the team that's nine points behind us. Um, Full and Dom, the, you know, when we played them last time, they were pretty competent. So this is, we, this isn't over, but we feel comfortable right now. You know, unless we really get into a bad run of form, I feel like we're all right. We did just draw a couple matches, though. We showed a lot of heart to make sure those weren't losses, but we haven't been bulletproof. Have not been bulletproof. English League rep bias didn't help on C. That is, that is true. Yeah, that is true. Oh, my goodness. Abdul Rahman Garib is going to be back for the Hellman Sport match. Guy missed two months with Asian Cup and the flu. Sus. How many matches at the end of the year? 11. We're nine points clear of the 11 matches left. Okay, I'm not doing both of those. Not doing a match practice in the middle of the week in consecutive weeks. That's psycho behavior. Check his hair. Gareem's coming back from Asian Cup, and I'm like, here, let me let me get let me get a feel of that there, big man. Ooh. You using a new shampoo, or is that a little thicker than usual, huh? Like, ah, you got those hair implants. I know what you did. Wait, Ron Rivera's going to Alabama? No, he's not. Ron Rivera's not going to Alabama. No, there's no Ron Rivera to... No. Oh, the Washington College coach. Yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. That makes more sense. I've heard that rumor. Hey, Kalen DeBoer is headed to Alabama. Oh, so who broke the news? It broke two hours ago. Wow, we were slow in chat. Pete Thamel broke the news. As of an hour ago, Kalen DeBoer has informed Washington officials he's taking the job at Alabama. He's expected to tell his team soon. Wow. That's a big jump, dude, from Washington State to Alabama. That's like a nice six-hour, five-and-a-half-hour flight at least. Yeah, the team probably already knows at that point if that news is being broken. So that's he, that's paradigm-shifting news in uh, American college football. The coach of the Washington team that lost in the national championship game will be taking the job at Alabama, which has traditionally been the best team in American college football over the last 20 years. Their coach retired. He was the best coach ever, won seven national championships, six at Alabama. And now Kalen DeBoer is headed from Washington, where he spent the last two years to take over the job at, uh, yeah. Take over the job at Alabama. Can you, I mean, I'm sure Alabama's paying him a bucket load. It's the biggest job in college football and 
He's a heck of a coach. I think it's a really good hire for them, for Alabama. I think they won't miss a beat with Deborah. That's a really good hire. Saban's first national championship was coaching LSU, Louisiana State. And then he went to the NFL where he flamed out. I uh, wasn't a good NFL coach, but he was a very good college coach. So he went back to college and then won six more national championships. Yeah, I'm sad for Washington. They've made a national championship and had a heck of a coach and then immediately, you know, you lose the national championship and you have your guy gone. Recall him. Literally recall him. All right, yes, Persorian and the Braun B coach is certainly upset with me, but look, uh, you can recall. You could have recalled the guy in the last transfer window, but you didn't. You left Rotundo here, and he's a deep cover option for me now, so I have terrible news. <laughs> Honestly, Chad, I just want Z to win enough so he can sign Lella Mella Bad Boy. I do, too. He, he didn't want to join Knock Breda, a team that had just been relegated from the Eredivisie, but maybe a team in the Eredivisie would be attractive to Lella Mella Bad Boy. Just perhaps, you know? Leon Cromantown, definitely a competent player, but problem is we found out his potential is not actually that good. But Cromantown should be in the conversation in the rotation more than he is. I'm overlooking him for absolutely no reason. He's a good young player that I should give I should give opportunities to when that attacking midfield spot is open. All right, y'all. That's as far as we were going today. But I appreciate you. The next stream will be on Monday. We're going to raid somebody, so at least stick around for that so we can make somebody's day. But love you guys. Fist bump. Thank you to everybody that, that subbed, that hung out all day. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Thank you for supporting the stream and allowing us to, to pay all of our editors and, and do what we do. And hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, we, we got a good transfer window in. We got some good results in. Unfortunately, we got bumped from the cup, but should be able to finish up the stream early or finish up the um, the season early next week and figure out whether we're staying in Nock Breda or whether we're moving on, you know? Should be a good time. So let's find somebody to raid. Who are we raiding? Yeah. Yeah. We are raiding somebody. Looking for somebody that I haven't raided before. It's always usually my uh, my preference. Find somebody I haven't rated before. Share the love. Oh, this dude's doing an online save. Let's um, let's hit him up. So he just started his streaming journey. He's at 169 uh, followers. This is me five years ago. You know. So let's uh, bring the energy, blow it up immediately, but he's not going to have like a moderator team that's going to be able to handle you guys. So chat, don't be weird challenge. Impossible. Be nice. How'd you get into, how'd you get into streaming? How'd you get it? Yeah. How'd you uh, get into football manager? He's got a Yankees hat on in his uh, profile picture. So dude might be American. I, I don't know yet, but enjoy it. Have a nice time. A hundred and nice. Yes, exactly. All right, have a great weekend. I hope your team wins. I'll see you guys on Monday. Video out tomorrow. Uh, Click it. It will be awesome. Love you. Bye.
All right, word of the day is... Word of the day is Elysian. Elysian. <laughs> like I said, Elysian. Uh, E-L-Y-S-I-A-N, Elysian. Something described as Elysian is blissful or delightful in a way that evokes something otherworldly. Elysian is also used to mean of or relating to Elysium. That is an internal paradise for the souls of the heroic and pure in classical mythology. They were motivated by the dream of retiring to a tropical isle and enjoying a life of Elysian ease. That's a sick word. An elision. All right, see you at the end of another word for another stream for another word of the day. Good gracious. Time for the weekend.